Good evening. Welcome to Gen Con TV. This is actor Roki set in the world of Chaldea. I'm your host and Dungeon Master Peter Adkison. Uh, we stream on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Sometimes it's me running this campaign. Sometimes it's Mike Boozer running another campaign. I run in Burning Wheel. He runs in uh, Dungeons and Dragons. And sometimes it's Marcus uh, producing uh, uh, Table Takes Plays. This also happens on mm. actor Roki. Yes, that's right. Um, so also, so tonight. We have with us Tanel Lovett as our resident illustrator, who will be doing live drawings of things that we're doing, and, which is an amazing challenge because I have no idea what's going to happen usually, and therefore, how can I explain to her? But somehow, she pulls it off. Um, I, <laughs> I am joined tonight by two of the nine players who are in this campaign, who will now introduce themselves, st starting with you. Hi, uh, I'm Ray, and I will be playing uh, Danica Yukos, uh, the Consul of Revenues. She is she, her, as I am she, her. Uh, you can find me pretty much only on Gen Con TV, so enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> and I am trying not to sneeze right now. <laughs> Hi, my name is Marcus. Uh, you, I, I am playing Alake, uh, Summation Man. Uh, I am the Imperial Consul of Commerce, and I am really excited to be back in Burning Saratov. And, and you like to, you prefer to be called Oli. Oli, yeah. Yeah, but nobody does. Nobody does. Because it's, it's too informal. It's too informal, but <laughs> I still insist as best as I can. Uh, that's great. <laughs> uh, let's talk briefly about safety. In my games, there will be no sexual assault or violence against children. Uh, if an NPC hates you, it won't be because of your skin color, your sexual orientation, or your gender identity. It'll be just because they're assholes and they just hate you. That's, or that's all. I suck. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's going to be for any of a variety. There will be NPCs that hate you. It's just going to be for other reasons. Uh, if a topic comes up that you're not comfortable with, let me know by using the X card, crossing your arms, or calling out to me in some way. Uh, if it seems easy to correct, we'll do so in the moment and move on. If it seems complex, we'll take a break. Uh, we can address problematic topics, typically with either lines or veils. Lines are topics that we do not want in our story at all, like the aforementioned. Uh, veils are topics that can come up, but we don't want to get into all the details of the sexual encounter or whatever. Like, okay, yeah. let's just you know, cut to the <laughs> beach, God. waves are crashing, <laughs> move on. Um, uh, do you feel like you understand these tools? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Thank you. You feel like they are sufficient? Yes. Yes, thank you. If something comes up that you didn't anticipate bothering you, just let me know. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. Well, we are going to start with a little bit of a remind our audience and each other who our characters are. And, um, uh, and I, I kind of want to let's lead that into beliefs. Uh, so we have um, in Burning Wheel, which is the game system that we are playing tonight, uh, Burning Wheel is very much about what are your character's beliefs, and I like this a lot. It's my favorite thing about Burning Wheel. The main reason I like it is because I'm a very um, lazy dungeon master, and <laughs> if you tell me your beliefs, it kind of gives me something to write a script from. So, <laughs> uh, so let's start with you, Ray. What are and what are Donica's Danica's beliefs these days? Uh, Donica's beliefs. She's managed to resolve at least one, where she was right. trying to get more safety and power, essentially, both in alliance with Zune, which she's more or less established. Um, however, she's got two other beliefs that she's working through right now. Uh, okay. The main one is, or uh, currently, is eliminate true believers. She thinks that they shouldn't be around, they're destabilizing, and fanatics don't do systems any good, is her belief. True, true <laughs> belief, like religious believers? True believers of any kind. You want to wipe out the church's set? Doesn't really matter if it's religion <laughs> or anything like that. If you are a true, zealotous believer of anything, there's something wrong with you, and I don't want to be around it. <laughs> um, secondarily to that, she believes that she needs to gather more money and power within this system because uh, the power comes from the money so we're going to try to control it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am, um, I'm not going to put you too much on the spot right now, but I'm going to encourage you to be thinking about how we can make these beliefs a bit more concrete. Like, um, like these are, an, like, uh, eliminating true believers. That's, that, um, that's like an ideology. Yeah. There right? are a couple of characters specifically that she would like to get, get remove their power structures. There's a couple heads of the church that are consolidating power. I would like to make moves to 
remove power from them whenever possible. Um, when it comes to the money side of it, um, the way that I'm going to angle is to take the money. Um, it's primarily been in the hands of the dwarves for a long time. Yeah. In the new structure, I would like it to be under us and never under them again. <laughs> that is the move that I'm going to try to make. <laughs> Bold move. Okay. They lost all the money. I feel like this is fair. So wipe out the Setites and take the money from the from the dwarves. Yes. <laughs> Simple. Okay, okay. Simple. great. Yeah. You are, you, okay, excellent. Okay. I'm going to push just a little bit harder. Okay, okay, so you're talking about people in the Church of Sad. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about Hosan, the head of the Church of Sad? Are you talking about Lexi's character? Lexi's character. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Lexi's character made a couple of moves that she did not really like. <laughs> okay, uh, so Farina, mm -hmm. Farina must... Um, must be contained or something like that. Yeah, must, I would like must... Serena to be contained. Halson uh, is a kind of a known like yeah. a variable. She is not, and yeah. she is a true believer. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, okay. Uh, it's funny because normally I am not at all somebody who likes PVP, but it works well in this situation. For some reason, I've just thrown all that Look, out. If anyone <laughs> else, another NPC arises is more crazy than that character, then I will go for them. But <laughs> it's just about who has a big blinking target okay. on. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. Note to self. <laughs> Make a crazy Be careful NPC. about putting Ray and Lexi in the same game. Okay. <laughs> and then, um, uh, okay, so, and then the other one is uh, you want to. Um, transfer more of the economic power away from the doors. Yeah. Um, I can give you an idea that um, might fit into that right now. Right. Um, there are two dwarves on the Council of Consuls, uh, which is Grantal, Geldzon, and um, Garl Steadfast. Garl just had a heart attack and died. Yes. Mm. Uh, so you could um, oppose the idea of some other dwarf from his clan just like slipping into that console position. Okay. You know, that's just an, you know, an idea. Okay. Um, uh, so maybe get them off the council. That's a, an idea. Um, uh, less control like, over uh, the that's money. That's going to be a voted position. You're not allowed to just roll your person in there or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the problem is that there's not really voting on the council. It's the way it's been operated in the past mm -hmm. is that, well, Emperor Cordava ran the crown. He's the emperor. There was no voting. He was the emperor, right? Yeah. You're just <laughs> like, who are yeah. you cool with? Pe who do people, you like? <laughs> people, came, people came together, experts in their fields, which mm -hmm. is how you got onto it. You two are leading experts in tax collection mm -hmm. and commerce, which we're going to get to you in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, and people would debate, express their concerns, and then he would make decisions. I mean, it's more like a staff meeting yeah. than anything else. Okay. Okay. And um, Tihomir, uh, who is now, uh, Tihomir is the um, chair of the Senate, which is a larger body. The Council of Consuls is a subset of. Yep. And he fills in for the emperor when the emperor isn't here. Well, the emperor's dead. And so what's happened is that Tihomir has basically been in charge and of the council and for the last couple, three weeks since Cordava died. And um, that's, that's the situation. So there's no voting. There's lobbying. There's people arguing for yeah, and yeah. against, whatever like that. Speaking but, colloquially, but to, I'm going to try to just yeah, prevent them. Yeah, to, under, yeah. You know, to, to have sway on this decision. In other words, to prevent some, you know, to, to influence what positions the dwarves have on the council, you're going to need to convince Tihomir. Okay. So just giving you... Um, so you could do something like, maybe this belief is, you know, convince Tihomir, not that somebody else... And there's also the question of who is head of the central bank. Yeah. With, well, the, that guy just died. <laughs> uh, it's like... There's several uh, open positions. Uh, so, <laughs> one, well, the council position is uh, the um, the head of the central bank. Uh, there's a fl more flowery title uh, for it, but um, the uh, uh, and, and by the way, Grantal, the other dwarf, is the imperial treasurer. So, Garl is the imperial consul of the central bank. So, running the central bank and being on the council of consuls are one and the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you could try to convince. Tiamir, that 
you know, someone else should run the central bank. Someone that's not a dwarf. Okay, so I'm not trying to put words in your mouth, but no, would that's you a like solid, to, would uh, you like to make that? Because I want yes. I need to get you down to something really concrete yeah, so no, that we perfect. know when you've accomplished it. That's perfect. I'll do that. Okay, so uh, convince Tihomir. Someone else should be uh, head of the central bank. Be consul, let's say. Oh, yes. consul of the central bank. Um, and since you resolved your third belief, your other belief, um, you get to come up with a new one. I'm not, you know, have to write this second, but um, if it, something hits you in the middle of the game or at some point, or before the next session, it doesn't have to be, okay. you know, you can say, hey, oh, I know my name. And it can be a reaction to something that happens. Um, I don't know, maybe I, Ollie will do something wild and I'll be like, <laughs> well, <laughs> I know <laughs> I, I do want to remind you both mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. there is an economic crisis and that, um, uh, your characters are probably going to be deeply involved. So it could be something as simple as prevent economic collapse of the empire. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's a main goal. Be pretty important. Yeah. <laughs> and there probably could be something more specific with that too. So if you get an idea, um, let me know. But let's uh, let's uh, let's move on to you, Marcus. Yes. Uh, talk about Oli. Since I'm not in character, I'll use Oli, yeah. your, your preference. Perfect. <laughs> so what are your, um, uh, what are your beliefs? Uh, to improve the exchange rate for the Samasian uh, Mina to the Gold Sovereign. Yes, very good. Yep. I, I got that. Uh, I have, uh, the Empire will crumble unless I find a political solution to this problem. I'll use every trick at my disposal to manipulate the best outcome for the Empire. That was one of the ones we felt yeah. weaker about. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that's a little vague. I'm not sure what to do with that. Um, I manipulate the best outcome. Yeah, you need to, I don't want to put you on the spot again, no, 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 but no. You, you need to think about that one a little bit. It doesn't, something's not coming to you right away. Um, then yeah, that's, that's still an action item for you. <laughs> 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 um, it might, um, you know, it might have something to do with the, uh, you know, preventing the economic collapse. That's that's mm -hmm. an empire crumbling, right? Could be something like that. Yes, political solution to the, because uh, there is uh, going to be a lot to dance around. Political solution to the financial crisis. Okay. Do you want to have a, it could be this political, yeah. Uh, yeah, it could be as, the same as, as Donica's, if you like. Um, you know, prevent the economic collapse of the industry. The yeah, we can both actually help, maybe. <laughs> you can both have the same belief, yeah, right? Let's yeah, do that yeah. For I, now. Um, and then uh, you also have one about Leanne. Yes, um, uh, it must be the 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 seat must be filled by the Cordovan bloodline. Leanne will sit on the throne. Yep. Leanne will sit on the throne. Got it. Okay, I'm glad you saw that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, not that I, I, the aforementioned writing a script based on your beliefs. <laughs> I thought that might come up. Oh, hell yeah. Okie dokie. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> well, um, after the, in the last council meeting, uh, there was certainly a big, Coupla about the, the economy, as you know, um, there was a um, <clears throat> a lot of angry voices. People are upset, of course, about uh, the imperial reserves being stolen, disappearing. Mm. Some people blame the dwarves either for poor security or for. Did they steal their own? Did they steal the gold? I mean, they were. It was a vault mm -hmm. in um, the uh, keep of Steadfast, right there. Stead Hall is the name of the keep. Um, it was a vault in the bowels of that fortress that was robbed, um, or the gold. That's where the central bank imperial reserves were located. Okay. Um, You, uh, you know, as people filing out uh, of the council, I want to kind of do, 
I'm not imagining necessarily a scene here, but I want to make sure I'm painting a picture of what the council's like. You know, um, when you go to the Council of Consuls, uh, it's a weekly meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the administrative body that runs the empire. It's a big frickin' deal, right? Uh, you and there's about 20 of you who are the consuls uh, come into this room. It's a big lavish room where you guys sit around a big circular table and you discuss things. And, and sometimes people, visitors come in like Amandela who yeah. gives her update on, uh, on <laughs> the, uh, um, uh, she was in charge of, she is in charge of palace security. It, it's fallen into her lap. The, uh, the fact that the emperor was assassinated in the palace, kind of like, you know. But she's done a very good job of pointing fingers back at other people. Mm -hmm. She's been in charge of psionic <laughs> interrogations. There have yes. been uh, a number of these interrogations. And uh, the, um, but most of you come with a bit of an entourage. You represent, you run departments in the empire. You have, you have clerks attorneys, scribes, you know, we, we've never fleshed this out really. Um, I think it'd be fun to start doing that, but um, uh, you have you have people. Don't, don't forget that you have people that you can send out to do things for you. Uh, mm -hmm. Like you imagine like somebody's the head of an administrative arm of the government as a whole department. So that is you. We've talked about where your offices might be. I think your office is actually in the palace, uh, if I remember right. And so, when you go to council, your people come with you and they're lobbying for, on your behalf with other aides and uh, scribes of other consuls. Uh, you know, there's a lot of politicking that's hap happening. Um, you know, there's 20 of you in the big, in one room, and then there's a big hall out there with probably 100 people. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> and a lot of rumor mongering. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, it, most, you know, nobody thinks that what's said in the council is very, Secure, uh, like, <laughs> like, like everybody pretty half much. Half of the campaign is misinformation, right? So, like, half yeah. my group, you go say all these lies, <laughs> I'll circle back, <laughs> right? Right. Um, so the plan that um, you're being pushed for, and I'm always leery of like pushing you to something and not and depriving you of your agency, but the momentum of the situation you're in is that, um, Tomas Sweef, who's the uh, Consul of, of Economics, mm -hmm. has outlined a plan for how to save the empire's economy. And it talks about getting the empire off the gold standard and forcing people to honor credits and um, limiting the access to physical cash, which in, in this case, like gold, um, gold and silver, um, you know, coins. Um, and to say no, you can't have your 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 money is on credit. You know, you yes, you own you know fifty thousand gold pieces worth of you know. I, I hate the term gold piece. There's no currency. It's actually called a gold piece, but we always <laughs> all know a gold. Yeah. So it could be minas, it could be finigs, it could be you know pletniks, whatever, right? You know, so people have uh, there's currencies for different. Um, uh, kingdoms of Chaldea. In I fact, yes. The, I want to know all the names yeah. of these, of these currencies actually, now. <laughs> okay, I will tell you, everybody on Twitch is like, no, don't go through, don't do that. But yeah, 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 yeah. I, I have I, done I, this. Yes, I, I, yeah, yeah. So I won't, I'll restrain myself. <laughs> Groshans. Uh, <laughs> um, I was, yeah. Sorry, I got you distracted. So there's the, the uh, uh, torts in Graver's, in Graver's Dig. There's That's the right, casino chip that. torts. <laughs> yeah, so you go to different kingdoms and they have their own currencies. <laughs> but um, with the gold reserves um, having disappeared from the central bank and some other vaults were robbed as well mm -hmm. on the same hour as Kredava was assassinated, yep. um, there will, when word gets out, there's going to be a run on banks. People Ooh. are going to go to the banks and try and get their money out. And Panic. that's... Not and, good. Tomas Swift is like, no, nobody gets their money out. We force everybody to go on credit. Yeah. So now, we are not economists, the three of us. <laughs> no. um, and so we will, um, I'm not going to put you on the spot to try to understand economic theory because, well, I mean, I could. I wouldn't know if you were right or wrong, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but basically, the way we play this is that your departments are going to be working with the types of 
entities that you normally deal with. Yours is very much business. Mm -hmm. So you write the laws of commerce. Mm -hmm. People that, and it's basically international commerce, how trade, uh, trade routes are set up between countries. Um, uh, what sorts of, of goods people are allowed to trade between countries. And you're always trying to advocate for more freedom of trade because mm -hmm. that makes the entire um, uh, empire healthier economically. But various countries are always, of course, inter their own interests. They want to protect, thing, uh, they want to monopolize and stuff like that. So that is, you, you deal with countries and large international trade organizations and how they work together. You deal with countries almost exclusively mm -hmm. in terms of collecting the revenues that are owed. And, and um, so your, you're going to be, you, you, your offices and lives are going to be under a lot of pressure to just work hard on this issue. But it's also fun if you sneak away and do something else because <laughs> <laughs> this is a game. It's like, hi, we're going to talk about tax policy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, game. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to try to link it to human drama. Yes, <laughs> yes, and, and that'll that'll be um, something. So, can I um, put you in a situation? Can I put you kind of into the middle of this? Um, or, I mean, if, if you, I guess the thing I'm asking is, is, unless you have something you want to do on your way out of the council meeting, um, like, uh, or something you want to do other than go to, go to your office and start working on this thing. I think that'll be the core thing that I want to do. I will send some aides out on a side mission to basically start doing some research and background into alternative candidates to be head of the, um, the bank. Basically, uh, okay. just to get that rolling for later, because that's like yeah. just happened. This guy dropped dead, <laughs> so <laughs> I haven't had very long to consider. So yes, but that is a side thing. I'm sending my aides off to do. I think I'm going to get cracking on the um, economic issue right away. Okay. Yeah, same uh, here. The only thing I could imagine would be writing a letter to Leanne for whenever I can the correspondence to her for whenever we actually are able yeah, to that's, uh, the touch base. The challenge is that um, you're not sure where she went. Yeah. Well, if she have if she communicates, like, they can pass it off. Yeah, I mean you. Um, uh, oh, oh, yes, we were talking about the Imperial Gold Reserves having gone missing. Picture of all the not money <laughs> that we don't have. Oh my gosh, there we go. So familiar. I saw. I like the little. I like the little ones. That, yeah, the little little pieces down there at the bottom. <laughs> That's wonderful. Those yeah. Whoever stole the money and left that as a joke, perhaps. <laughs> it's like it's fine. Thank you, Tunnel. That's great. Fabulous. Yes. It is uh, like Tunnel illustrated. It is a spherical vault. That's cool. Uh, a perfect sphere with a uh, sp with a circular door that uh, mm -hmm. seals it when it's closed. <clears throat> Um, so, um, you do hear, um, that, uh, um, yeah, okay, so I think what would happen, what would, uh, Tama would try and organize is to, um, your need to talk to people, delegations from different countries, this is a big enough issue that it's going to get kicked up the ranks in some issues, like your people talking to some other people. Um, there's going to be times where you guys personally have to talk with, like, the king of some place, you know, mm -hmm. or, or the Patesi of this or the Jarl of that. And um, and it also happens, you might recall, that um, Tihomir sent out a writ of summons. Oh, yes, in fact, you even delivered one of these writs of summons <laughs> to Senate. Uh, <laughs> all over Chaldea. And over the coming few weeks until Senate uh, is called to order, it's expected that there are going to be dignitaries arriving from all over Chaldea uh, to participate in the Senate. Okay? And there is a place called the Senate Discourse. You've now, you two are both senators also, mm -hmm. right? You have to be a senator to be a, count, a consul. Um, this Senate discord is a massive, like, uh, you know, like Congress. You know, it's, it's a, a, um, a big legislative building with 
Um, and it's got a big central senate, but it has a whole bunch of offices and places. And people, it's kind of a natural gathering ground mm -hmm. without people having, and people will come to the palace too, but uh, it's a little ease, less security. Uh, I mean, not in a bad way, but I mean, like, it's a, less, a little less formal than coming into the palace. Okay. So, Toma, who outlined this plan, has suggested that uh, the that the two of you and him and Anton, who is a relationship you have, by the way, mm -hmm. who is head of uh, taxation policy, policy. Yeah. right? Um, <clears throat> and the dwarves, <clears throat> um, that you all set up like adjoining offices in the Senate discourse so that you can all uh, do some joint presentations of this plan. Mm -hmm. Uh, to visiting dignitaries and also have breakout meetings and this sort of thing. Um, do you go along with this idea? To get together and talk, to just talk? Uh, basically become a working area, like where, I mean, you have your offices, um, uh, or, um, yeah, it's just kind of thinking, like, we're all going to be working long hours. To create we're going to have, we're going to, have to yeah, work that's, together that's on a lot of things. We're, thing. we're all going to have to be able to communicate with each other a mm -hmm. lot. Let's just all have... Get my overnight bag, yeah. Yeah, yeah. let's all set up uh, adjoining offices here in the Senate discourse, and we can have uh, joint meetings as necessary. We can meet with each other as necessary, put in long hours, and... Uh, that's practical. I support it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, so the... Uh, the dwarves, by the way, are a bit distracted. Yeah, they lost all their money. Yeah. Well, and they, <laughs> and they lost uh, they lost uh, Garl Steadfast, the dwarf that That's died. That's right. Heart and attack. So yeah, a heart attack during the meeting when the elder dragon showed up. Um, <laughs> I forgot that that's when it happened. I remember that it happened. I forgot that's when it happened. <laughs> yeah, Laufroth, uh, there's a dragon. Yes, there's a dragon who is a consul. And um, he hasn't been at council in a while, but um, he came to the last meeting. And there's a lot of history of enmity between dragons and dwarves in Chaldea. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, so this, um, but yeah, they're, uh, they're on board. The, um, there is a... Garl never married, but he did have a um, a lover. Uh, he had several. He had he's had children's children by several dwarven women, um, and one of them, uh, an early one, is a, is a woman named Beulah. Ooh. And Beulah is sort of stepped into the acting is is acting as if she is the um, uh, the head of the bank the central bank. I mean, somebody needs to be yeah. until somebody else is appointed. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's actually what been her again? there for decades. Uh, Beulah. Beulah, Beulah. Yep, B-U-E-L-A-H. Um, and Grantal will be there from the Gelzon clan. So that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of you. Six of the council, consuls that are joining. Uh, Sort of things, and um, I want to um, focus on uh, as a way to kind of get I, my. I've also been like, how do I get my DMing hands around this mm -hmm. problem uh, of you having to try and convince a whole bunch of different factions and so forth um, uh, to go along with this plan? And I thought, well, I think maybe the best way is to just focus on one. As have it be kind of like, let's play out a really important one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, um, uh, and have, it. so the first delegation that comes to the capital city is also one of the most important. Now, there's a bunch of kingdoms that are really important that kind of around the capital city, uh, you know, on the, on the, in, in the, um, the continent of Tamika, the main continent, the most populous continent, it's the continent where the capital city is, and, and there's several other really important kingdoms. Nobody's too worried. You guys aren't too worried about these kingdoms. They're close to the empire. They're, they're close to the capital. They, they, everything tends to be peaceful with most of them. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, there's some exceptions, but um, uh, the two of the most powerful kingdoms that are not on this continent are Emil and Perrin, and they are inspired respectively from French and British culture. Okay, Emil being French, of course, and Perrin being British, and uh, they are both. Perrin is an island, a large island kingdom. Emil is a a kingdom that shares a large island with one other kingdom. That's a very kind of weird, monstrous race. Um, and these two kingdoms have been allied or enemies uh, throughout Chaldea history. They've had times when they've fought, they've had times, but they have a, 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 a very shared culture, just like English and French do in real life. Um, and in fact, the king of Perrin, uh, Laurent, is, is from email. <laughs> He's Amian. <laughs> Drax, Drax. Yeah, yeah. And he uh, he arrives in town, the king of Perrin, and he is has an entourage with him. Um, they set up a um, uh, they set up camp. Where are they going to set up camp here? Uh, They apparently have, uh, Tomas set this up for them, that they could set up camp in, um, near Celestia. Celestia is the palace of Sybil, who's not been in council since Gradava died. Yeah. By the way, there's an interesting rumor about her floating around that your people would report that they heard from other people. Uh, the rumor is that Sybil, when she was interrogated by the Taxians, that uh, she resisted and killed the taxian that was interrogating her and fled town. That's why she's been missing, that she is on the lam. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. I think my informants about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> and also, and, she, and she's good friends with Ariadne, the two of them. Uh, She's you, a social person, right? Yeah, you might remember that Sybil and Ariadne um, uh, were dodging Drazzledar, trying to get to Cordova's body in the night that he died, mm -hmm. and um, uh, which makes them very persons of interest. Anyway, yeah. so uh, the joint parent, Amian. Um, contingency was given an area here to set up camp and their camp they set up was a magical fortress. They came in town and went beep, 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 and created a like a Danger's magical fortress, you know, that magic item, only much bigger, hmm. from grander, like an entire huge fortress complete with magical defenses and a retinue. Ooh. And they just set it up back in, in Sybil's backyard. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like, it's certainly a move, okay. No one's using the space right now. Uh, it's a power move, yeah. And so they have a, uh, so they have a whole entourage that comes and, um, and there's a, a session that you have scheduled with them in specific because these two kingdoms are Two of the most powerful kingdoms offside, out of the out of the direct sphere of the of of Saratov, you know the most powerful foreign nations, if you will, from the perspective of the capital, right? Yeah, and um, two of the three. There's a couple others, but two of the important ones. They are pre they come together. They're presenting kind of a united front, and uh, the king of one of the kingdoms is there uh, to treat in person. And I think this kind of represents like one of the more difficult challenges that you'll have is in talking uh, with them. So in what you're, you're trying to do is convince them that um, to go along with this plan yep. and, and to stay part of the empire, which is really kind of what's at stake here. Mm -hmm. like, like the empire, you can imagine from their perspective, 
the empire just like the gold reserves are gone. You know, where you, you can blame the dwarves, but people outside mm -hmm. are blaming you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. you, you guys, right? Yeah, we're the people you, in charge. We lost it. So. it yeah, yeah. It's so, um, and you are specifically are going to want them to continue to pay taxes yes. and be part of the empire. Yes, I do. <laughs> and you specifically are going to want to, them to continue to honor trade agreements uh, with uh, kingdoms from other, you know, trade agreements that you've worked hard on for many years to get past tariffs and, you know, to reduce tariffs, to um, uh, honor honor trademarks, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, to not demand their guilds be monopolies, you know, I mean, just things that you've worked hard, uh, all as, you know, being good citizens of the empire, yeah. and um, uh, they're not, they have not been mm. going along with it. So, uh, I think that this will be a um, I'm seeing this as a duel of wits. I mentioned an email, so I don't know if you had, had a chance to look at that. But what I'm what I'm proposing is that we use the duel of wits mechanic, which is like you know traditionally you just make a persuasion test or whatever. Duel of wits is like a, a melee, like a, like having a, a several melee rounds of combat to resolve <laughs> a political a a social disagreement. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so um, uh, the way it works is that we start with a, what's called a, um, a uh, I forget my notes out here. And by the way, I, I have not run one of these in a long time. So uh, <laughs> that's, a, oh, I have it we electronic. we find out as we go along. It'll yeah, be fun. Yeah, yeah, I. I um, read this twice in the back of a lift. <laughs> so what it starts with is what, what's called state your case, which is, um, this is what, both sides want and what they want, okay? And I, I think I've articulated, I think I've said kind of what you want. You want them to keep paying taxes mm -hmm. uh, to, um, uh, to honor the plan, plan, pay taxes, um, using credit, use of credit, and, um, uh, you know, and you, you want them to honor Existing trade committee. Trade. Exactly. Trade um, uh, agreements. Agreements that they made to the empire. Yeah, and what they are demanding is a payment in gold. I mean, which you guys what? don't have, mm -hmm. but that's what they're demanding is. Uh, Payment in gold, um, valuables, or property for their account balances with the uh, with the central bank. So and we want to make sure that that's on that's on because the plan is to keep it on credit if we're going to do that, right? Yeah. So we don't we do not want to. Yeah, yeah. No, that's basically we need to convince them like you need to stay in the stay in the empire and you need to agree to go on credit with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. And they're they don't they're not saying that they want to be independent of the empire. They better not be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> <Just> like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they they are. Uh, it's certainly being postured that that that's at stake, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like their, their continued loyalty uh, is contingent to, on this. Is, is um, uh, you know, is, you know, hey, they just break, break free and stop paying taxes and, uh, uh, you know, and, and, and still, you know, try and get their money back. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 okay. So uh, the way dual of words works, uh, that's, so it, I put words in your mouth, but is that, does that yes. sound good for you, you guys? Okay. Correct, that sounds great for me. Yeah. Okay, and um, so that is part of the process of the Duel of Wits Mechanics. Everybody has to agree that this is, uh, that they're willing to um, use this mechanic to proceed. <laughs> <And then> that, <laughs> that, 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 that. We're willing to play ball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 
Um, I mean, the alternative is to say, you know, walk out of the room. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. saw that. <laughs> walking away. Yeah. You could you know, <laughs> just to say, no, I'm going to walk away. So you're, you're going to stay and do your jobs. Yeah. We cannot. Yeah. 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 In this yeah. instance. Yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. what yeah. we're being paid for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not paid for. It's fine. Right. <laughs> right. And um, uh, so we will establish what's called a body of argument. Now, let's see. I well, if you guys have looked at this, maybe you saw it, but I'm trying to remember what happened if we have basically multiple PCs. I think one of you becomes the central person and the other um, person can do help dice. Let's see, dual voice. Or you take turns. That's it. Uh, let's see. Well, if it's a um, turn-based thing, then maybe it could be like between the two of us if one of us feels stronger about coming to the coming forward to like do something about it. Maybe we're kind of partners in it and looking at each other being like, you take this, you take this. Yeah, like we, we, we do have very stuff. similar goals right now. Yeah. And we are negotiating on behalf of the empire. So, yeah. you know, it makes sense. Okay, I could see you doing that. Yeah, and, I, and you know, and obviously you have allies, but you know, everybody's busy, Yeah. right? You know, um, Toma is deep in a conversation with the, the other most powerful kingdom in Chaldea outside of, you know, uh, that, uh, that's Hesse, uh, or, you know, somebody, you know, so this, it's just like, it's the two of you who are two, you know, it, and all the councils are, you know, it's divide and conquer, everybody's doing this, right? Um, I think it might be empire. good if, um, okay, so here, you have two or three characters per side, you use patrol method, one player rolls the body of argument, the other self, each player takes an action in the exchange, speaks apart, rolls the dice, other members may support, Using the helping mechanics, okay. Characters don't take two actions in a row. In a row. Okay. All right. There we go. Okay. So that that so that answers that question. Okay. I need to put a something there. Okay. So for body of argument, um, there is going to be a test, and if this is for a Sort of a, let's see, intimate and personal argument, no, showy debate, maybe, harsh questioning, test inter uh, interrogation, no, it's not really an interrogation. Okay, so this is like a showy debate. You guys are all lobbying in front of your respect, your, your respective aides are there, um, and it's, it's um, uh, they have their entourage there, and so for that, the, um, uh, the best, the, the, the typical skills are oratory uh, or rhetoric mm -hmm. or stent, uh, poisonous platitude, no, or uh, centaurious debate. Do either of you have any of those skills? I uh, have both of those skills. I have rhetoric. Excellent. Okay, I would say I'm, I'm figuring out. Persuasion play into this at all? And uh, not for this. Okay. I mean, it will in some of the details, but not for this particular test. So what, what are your scores in oratory and rhetoric? Oratory is a five, rhetoric is a three. Okay, there's a five. And what's your rhetoric? Uh, is it two? Okay, so I would recommend that you do the test for the body of argument. Okay. And so that will be a, um, uh, your oratory. Yeah, you're getting your oratory test in. Um, now, what happens is the number of successes you get is added to your will. What's your will? My will is a six. What's yours? Seven. I, okay. Well, I think that the, having the five That's versus stronger. the two is probably stronger, even though you have a stronger will. Yeah. Okay. It's way better. Um, and you can, uh, so you get out your five dice. Don't roll them yet. Go ahead and I'm put them out here. Yeah, we are building up to a die roll uh, there. <laughs> it's uh, coming. Uh, <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> oh, there's not going to be a success or fail. Uh, so, um, okay, so you have five dice, and you can lend a help dice. So if you want to lend a help die, um, you can slide I would, I would it over. I would love to. I would use what I use. Uh, do I have to pick what I use or any? Uh, it's rhetoric. Rhetoric. Okay, yeah, so, that's, yeah, so you can slide a die over there. Awesome. Um, and... <clears throat> I'm going to say that you have a die. Somebody on your staff is also skilled okay. at this, Ooh. and we'll give you a, a help die. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Um, you can use persona on this test if you want. 
Um, this basically, this body of argument will basically return, uh, d will determine your hit points, if you will. Okay. That's basically what, what we're doing here. Oh, let's see. It looks like I have three persona on here. I don't know exactly. How you never want to spin the last one. Okay. Um, you can, but yet, this is one something you have to decide before you roll. Yeah. And so if you want to spin a persona, it's one more die in the pool. Uh, you, I'm gonna not use it yet. Maybe if we get yeah, to die. There will be a lot of die rolls later. here. Yeah. These subsystems are designed to help help me uh, get you to spend your fate because fate tends to stockpile if you never yeah. use the yeah, sub yeah, yeah. system. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, great. I'm trying to think if I can think of anything else. Um, does anything with reputation help with any of this? If you have like uh, relationships that might play in, that gives it makes it easier for me. Uh, the only thing that you said would help probably was rhetoric and oratory from my end. Not like yeah, you can only help. You can only anything. get one die on that, yeah. the help. Oh, that's right, that's right. It has I to be the right that. skill, and you have the right skill, so you so you get the the die. Perfect. Um, okay, the body of argument. Uh, Curious of having a particularly um, a relationship or a reputation helps at all if it's uh, reputations help with circles tests okay. and um, uh, relationships. Uh, if you so probably not for a dual points. <laughs> well, you have a who do you have relationships with? Maybe uh, they... the merchant guilds. Which is they well, want to right? relationships are with the individual. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Um, that's on, uh, Anton and T. A. Swift. I've got relationships with both of them. So. You want to try and mm -hmm. get one of them in here? I mean, they're out doing other things, but you was like, holy shit, this is like a big I would deal. Be like, this is a big one. I'm going to see if I can if I can loop one of them in. Would try. I would at least try to see if I can loop one of them in. Yeah, I think yeah. I forgot you do have relationships with both of them. Yes. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> and mine, okay. they are in right. my department. Yes, <laughs> and by the way, this is, um, yeah, okay, so let me let me answer my other questions. Uh, like, do you want to have a new taxation law that really sucks for you? Because we can make that happen. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Very convincing. Have you, have you have you met my my, my friend? <laughs> Introduce everyone, like, have you thought this through? Have you met my friend Anton and also? <laughs> Okay, there's a, I apologize, I don't have this. Oh, you're good, there's a lot, this is a, a really dense, wonderful book, but it's, it's a, there's a lot to look at. That's why uh, sticky notes and uh, oh, yeah. tabs have been our friend look at this. while look we're this learning monster. this. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> Far more organized than mine. I need to get on that. And mine are not even that organized. <laughs> like, I could do much worse. <laughs> No, no, Danica's just like, this is, this, this whole thing is like what I do, so like I certainly hope that I do well, but we'll see, because it's all down to these like dice pools, and dice pools are so like, mm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's like a stat major out there who's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I always think there's somebody watching the stream like, Peter, no, you're getting it all wrong. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, the first rule of, of, you know, I go back to what Gary Gygax said in the, Dungeon Master's Guide, you know, don't let some backroom lawyer try to tell you how to run your game. Just do it. Just At dive in point, and do you're it. No longer having fun. That's not a direct quote. A but yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, all right. Okay. So I'm not games. finding the very the little thing I was working for. Okay. So in terms of a circles test mm -hmm. uh, to get oh, um, Anton, you said? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, let's do, let's look at the circles mechanic. Uh, this is going to be um, not a bad um, sort of, this is not going to, shouldn't be too hard to roll. Okay, so circles start with ob one. Mm -hmm. um, if there, there can, and there's all sorts of ways there can be penalties. You're not going to get a penalty because of occupation. This is somebody in a similar occupation. Mm -hmm. It's somebody in, in your station. Um, it is, uh, you're not looking for somebody with some, you're looking for a specific person that you already know. And, um, oh, but right here, right now, in the middle of trouble. Well, well, you could have, um, I mean, this, this meeting was on your agenda. Mm -hmm. And uh, as it gets close, you, yeah, I'm going to say you know this is going to be a big deal. Uh, so I've been like, hey, hey, can you move your schedule? That block right there, that one meeting. I would need you to have an open block so we can argue with these guys. 
Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so, and, and he's got an office right next door. So I'm just going to, I'm going to pull a plus one uh, on it just from the, like, it, it, I mean, he would be there for sure, but there could be something just as critical because that's the chaos that you're in the middle of right now. Yes. Okay. So, okay. So it's going to be ob two and you've got a circles of, what's your circle score? Uh, it's an attribute. Uh, look my on. circle score. Over That's here. your character burner. Um, look at your oh, character okay. sheet. That's probably going to be. Yeah, look on the back of that. Flip it over. Mm -hmm. Circles is going to be. Oh, you haven't put it over there yet. Okay, so it's on here. Um, circles is down here then. Circles. Oh, okay. Four. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep put these aside for a minute. You're going to roll four dice, and uh, there's no um, forking or anything like that. So. Okay. Let's see. I've got five, five and, six. and six. Yeah, it's ob two. So there you go. Nice. Okay, success <laughs> on a success. <laughs> hey, don't get in here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, uh, yeah, I know. I didn't build that up very well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's so gonna be a, nice. It's so good yeah, to yeah, like yeah, talk yeah. with you. We've been okay. so excited for this. We're gonna get everybody here. Anton, Anton, can you just come over here for a second? Yeah, look who's here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, that's about it. Yeah, Anton comes. Yeah, I'm kind of glossing over a lot of the, you know, the 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 formality. I mean, this was set up. You know, your people talk to his people. It's the you know, it's the king of a kingdom. Yep. Uh, he is, you know, on par with uh, somebody like Zune in terms of power or civil or some of the most powerful consuls. I mean, not as powerful as the emperor was, yeah. obviously, yeah. but. Um, um, like Tiamir is the ruler of Rush, in addition to uh, his position on the council. That's right. um, <clears throat> okay, so, um, and there are four characters in uh, in um, this entourage of interest. Uh, one of them is, like I mentioned, the King Laurent. There is also a wizard. Everybody knows he's a wizard. He's just like, <laughs> that's Belkis. He's the court sorcerer for the kingdom of Perrin. His name is Belkis. Belkis. He's human, British, wizard, sort of a Merlin type character, if you will. <clears throat> the French representative is um, the guy that's known as being like the baddest ass knight in, mm -hmm. in, in Emile. Uh, his name is uh, Gris Luzon. Gris. Uh, Gris, G R I S. Gris. Gris, excuse me. Gris. French. Gris. French. Gris. Gris. Gris Luzon. Luzon. Gris yes. Luzon. Gris Luzon. <laughs> uh, the Chevalier of the, of the crown. You know? <laughs> and he is like, he's got your trait, drop dead gorgeous. Ah, yeah. Okay, and okay. Uh, physically powerful, beautiful armor, you know, just the, the whole nine yards. So cool. um, and uh, there is a person with them who is um, sitting in a, what do they call those things they carry? I uh, forget, like, the, you, the, you put them in, uh, like, like oh, two, you're talking yeah, about. people, they, like, you know, a couple people With carry this little ends, thing, and, and there's, yeah. and, and inside, like, a, like, a, and the drapes are down, there's somebody yeah, present, cold. but you don't know who it is. Mm. Okay. Okay. That's, that's with, with them. And it's, uh, anyway, and anyway, so, and there's scribes and stuff like that. And. You know, they all get formally introduced and, you know, the, you know, all this, there's all the appropriate sorts of things. I mean, these meetings would be so much more efficient if you could just like cut to the chase, you know. Yeah, yeah there's just like 30 minutes later of them announcing their titles. And, like, <laughs> so a guy comes along. in with some horns and starts playing and the next procession has to come in. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of that. I'm it just, just sitting there like It's just like, okay, come on, we get to work. Yeah. The empire yeah. is crumbling. Yeah. Stop playing horns. <laughs> every second. Every <laughs> second. Like, like Anton's aide is like, yeah, I'll come over as soon as the, uh, you know, when we get past the, ah, there's Gree. Oh, yes. there you yeah, go. yeah, nice. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank very you. Very good visual. I was wondering who, who was that cutie over there. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Anton would be like, yeah, okay, I'll show up when the actual discussions yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right now, stop right, playing. Right, right now, I got cute. these damn Hessens I got to deal with. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll send one of my aides to kick you in the ankle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that we are uh, ready for you to make this uh, this this body of argument test. Um, and uh, let's see, I gotta get back to the right sp spreadsheet here. 
right, and if Anton is there, do I get another die from him? Or? Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Good yes. ask. I <laughs> forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. Anton, very yes. good. Yes. Very yes. good. Yes. I rolled yes. about yes. it and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that's exactly right. Okay, so we're going to do your, yeah, your body of argument. Okay, so it's going to be your will, okay. which is, uh, I think we determined was six, six. Yes. plus, um, uh, uh, plus however many successes you get here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll see what yeah, the dice gods do. You got this. <laughs> the stats got this. <laughs> all right. Let's uh, see. I've got pretty. three sixes. And the rest are all traitors. And the rest are all traitors. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you can spend uh, a fate mm -hmm. to explode the sixes. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. You want it. Yeah. So, for well, sure. So leave these dice out here untouched. Okay, just leave them there and just put things. in three more dice. And two fours. Two more successes. All right. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So and that's five plus your will of six so 11. is eleven. It's your body of argument. Yes, okay. stats and fate. Mark down some fate. That was enough sixes that it was good to explode. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the uh, um, so Laurent. <laughs> Is um, is going to do the same on from his end, and um, he has also a will of six, Oof. and um, uh, he is getting. Let's see one two three four five. Oh, that's for the body of argument. Oh yeah yeah yeah. No, he's testing oratory, and his oratory skill is five. So one good. two three four five. And he is getting help from Belkus and help from Gree. So that's seven that's dice. Nice. Oh my God, that's not very, eh, that's not bad. That's not horrible. Okay, so that's three successes. He definitely has fate. <laughs> Four successes. Four and six is 10. So you have a slight advantage. Uh, slight, slightly better body of argument. Okay, so now. We get to do the thing. The um, I have a a oh. little thing that you guys oh. can pass back and forth. I uh, I only have two of these pens. Uh, we we'll have to share. Um, yeah. But only one of you is actually going to use one of those at a time. Yeah. So actually, you know, one of these you're going to start. So that's going to be the official one. But you have it to refer to. Yeah, okay. This is so cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Laminated and everything. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So the way Duel of Wits works is that you're gonna pre, you're gonna program a volley of three uh, actions, and I'm gonna do the same. We both simultaneously, secretly do it, and, and I'll do mine first and flip it over so that you guys can talk freely about what your what yours is um, without me being able to change it. And um, there is, uh, so there's a, a several different tactics you can take, avoid, and you see them over in these two columns here, and there's a lot of words and stuff like this here, but let me help you kind of um, break it down a little bit. Mm -hmm. There's avoid the topic, there is uh, dismiss, there's faint, incite, obfuscate, point, and rebuttal. The, um, uh, if you notice, be beneath each one of those, avoid the topic underneath that, it says test will. That's a big hint because you're going to want to be, you're probably going to be drawn towards uh, um, actions that you can do well. Like you have a will of seven. Yes. So uh, avoid the topic. And the way it's going to work with the two of you is mm -hmm. that you guys are going to alternate um, actions. Mm -hmm. So as Ray is the lead, uh, Donica will pick the first volley, and and the way it works, you're just going to check, like first volley, you're just going to check which one of these to use, and then second volley, check which one, third volley, check which one. And there's some sun, there's some ones on here you don't have to worry about, like casting spells, and um, you're you're not casting spells. You, maybe they are, who knows? But you're oh not. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> there might be some, who knows? There might be some trickery or sorcery around uh, at work. Um, uh, but basically those first three sections, verbal attack, verbal defense, and special uh, verbal actions. So you can kind of get an idea which of these are interesting based on what skills you have high scores in. So like you have an oratory of five. Um, you know, you look through here, oratory comes up in dismiss. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you a little bit about some of these, just so you know. 
This miss is very powerful, but if it fail, it, but you use it when you think you're close to winning, you can get some advantages, and if you, and it, it it'll you'll have more likely chance of winning a dismiss or scoring points with a dismiss than other actions. But if you fail, then you have a disadvantage going into the next volley. Okay. Um, point. Point is like, I attack. <laughs> point is like a, a good, solid. Um, you leave yourself open to something. Uh, it's not defensive at all. So, um, uh, but it's, it's um, a good way to score points. And when I talk about scoring points, this body of argument you have of 11, the body of argument I have of 10, in the course of our duel, we're going to take damage to our body of argument. Mm -hmm. And whoever gets down to zero first loses. Okay. Right? So, um, you're, so it's like having hit points. Yeah. Very much like having hit points. Okay? Argument points. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So let me uh, okay. think about... I have a notion for what I would like to lean into my strengths for. Um, it's not nice, though. <laughs> so let me pick mine before you talk. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Good idea. Yep. Very um, good idea. <laughs> and... Uh, and the, the news is I'm not very good at this. I, just because I've done it before doesn't, I've never figured out a good strategy this, so. for this. <laughs> this. We're just I, like, whatever sounds I, good. I, I think, it, yeah, I think that's, uh, uh, and what's fun is when we play these out, you get to, you're, you're obligated to say something that supports whatever it is you're doing. Oh. So, which is kind of fun. This is going to be fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, things that I actually have on my skill sheet and being like, okay, like what, what do I have the most highlights? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going through that right now. This is a, okay. a thing. I've made my, I've made my decision. Uh, and so the way it is now, so the first volley, Ray, is your character and you'll roll the mm -hmm. test for that. The second volley is Marcus's character, because you two are both doing this. So you will have your action, whatever you decide is going to be in the second volley, and then it's back to Ray, Donica for the third volley. And then uh, in the next round, um, Marcus's character would start. Basically, it's you alternate, but since there's three volleys, okay. uh, oh. you, you take turns being yeah. who's first, first. Sounds good to me. Okay, yep. okay. Yeah. going for it. So, um, I am simply waiting for you to decide what your volleys are. Okay, so basically... So, so you can check off... Decide volley one. And if you guys want to confer, you can. Yeah. But you need to check for volleys one and three, okay. what your actions are going to be on volley, volleys one and three. So you just put a little check marks So you're going to use a bar your pen? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would... Yeah, and you just check number two. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's all right. I do. Yeah, 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 yeah. So... Okay. Uh, but you have yeah, to check with the boxes one. and stuff. Yeah, yeah I wanted to see to what check. she was going to say first. Before. I was thinking I might start out with an insight to try to see if I can weaken them a little bit going into whatever like, your next action is going to be, but it depends on what you're good at. I am. I have eights in falsehood and intimidation. Ooh. So <laughs> I'm very good at uh, inciting, but I am also pretty good at dismissing as well because um, anything that can bring the intimidation or a falsehood in so I could be dismissed or I could be faint but um, in sight is where I can I can pull two eights out mm. so. okay sounds good so um, Peter let me know if that's how it works is it like everything that I bring to the table like that's how many dice I get to roll or do I have to pick which is one of them I, I'm sorry, I was uh, planning my own. If I was I figuring thought, out how many dice I was supposed to roll because I was like, oh shit, I'm going to have to roll two dice too. <laughs> yeah, because um, basically okay. I've got, say if I did, say if I did do insight, I have yeah. eights and falsehood and intimidation. Do I have to just pick one of those to use or am I using oh, all of them? Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, so if you have, um, uh, so what you'll do is you'll pick one skill to test. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, what were the two you have? Falsehood, uh, falsehood and intimidation. intimidation. Okay, so you'll pick one of those, okay. and then you'll fork the other one. 
Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, okay. Uh, so any of these, if you have overlap multiple skills on this list, you can fork one into the other. So if you have a seven falsehood or a whatever it was, yeah, yeah, whichever one you test, you get to add one die from the other one. Okay, okay, nice. So basically I've got uh, an eight in intimidation of an eight in falsehood. If I was going to go for intimidation being like, hmm, are you sure you really want to break off from the empire? Mm, I don't think that'll go so good for you. We still have a huge military power on our side, yeah, blah, 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 like that kind of thing. Mm, or it yeah. just is going to go bad for you economically because everybody is friends with me. <clears throat> As you know, I have a great reputation with all of the merchant guilds, something like that, just to say it's going to be yeah. rough for them. Yeah. yeah. Intimidation, and then I would fork into falsehood. Maybe Maybe I overplayed a little bit, being like, oh, maybe we will be really mean to you, and just like hide the fact that it's it would be rough. So then I would get an extra die, yeah. so it would be nine die total? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there is, uh, um, uh, there is an Imperial Legion yeah. uh, just outside the capital city of Karen. <laughs> and there's one. We're like... <laughs> there, We're there, very America in that we have a uh, we have military outposts all over the place. <laughs> there is also an Imperial Legion not far from the capital of Emil. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's almost as if the Emperor thought about this. Yes. Yeah. So I'm just kind of like. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if you want to, uh, yeah. So if you're looking for in, you know things that you could say to support something like that. All right, I think I think I will go with that unless you would like me to try something because like um I could because either way there's other things where I could fork into them quite easily um, because uh, falsehood uh, persuasion like I could do a feint or something I just feel like putting them on the back foot as an opener would be very Danica yeah but, go for it okay uh, I'm gonna mark that down I'm going to incite as my first action in volley one. <laughs> Do I need to pre-plan volley three? Yep. Okay. Yeah, these are all planned. So I think I'm going to lead with dismissal. Um, uh, there's more important things than this silly, like than, than this. Like this is the this is about the empire. You, you did hear what I said about dismissal? Did no. you hear? Maybe I didn't. Dismissal is um, usually for when we're about to close the oh, argument. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I missed that. My bad. My bad. You want when you think you have enough that you're close enough to knocking out their body of argument. You know, that's like, when, like that's fine. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I am good at intimidation, so I would be able to f uh, do intimidation, and I believe I can... I've, what do I need to do to fork? Is there a, like a score that I need to be at to fork into? Uh, no, you just have to have the skill. Okay, then yeah, I would be able... I can, I can definitely oh. fork on the dismissal. Oh, and if the fork... Oh, here's another thing. If the forking skill has... If the skill that you're forking in mm -hmm. is at least a seven, if, if you have a skill seven in that skill, you get to add two dice. Oh, not quite that. Yeah. Well, that's... well, actually, no. In the insight, I do. Like, I'm able to pull in two eights on that. So, yeah, I do get an extra die. So, what are you doing in your third there one? There you go. The is third it? one, I'm thinking dismiss. Dismiss, okay. Uh, because I would be close to it. I can use my intimidation, which again is an eight, and then I can fork in either to oratory or rhetoric and get nine die for the dismiss attempt. Okay, nice. Five, ten on the first attempt. Okay, so you guys have your. So pick? that's. I'm just gonna confirm real quick. What do you have? One and two again. One and three. Or so one and three again. You're doing volley, volley two. I'm doing um, insight on volley one, and I'm going to do dismiss on volley three to try to okay. end the argument. Okay, perfect. Um, then I will point. Points always good. If you can't decide, I, I think talk point, about our argument. Points a good solid. Uh, attack. So you're doing that on volley two. Correct. I'm okay. Just looking at insight, it says that basically it's a standard test. Obstacle is equal to the victim's will exponent. If the inciting player passes the win, then uh, the victim has to make a steal test. Um, and if he hesitates, he'll miss his next action. So, yeah. But if it fails, then there's going to be problems and it'll make it worse for you. All right. Let's jump in. Okay. Uh, my first uh, volley is a, is a point. Okay. And yours is what? Insight. Insight. Okay, so I have a little chart. I have a little cheat sheet here. I'm looking at uh, insight versus point. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. 
Okay, insight versus point. Okay, the pointer, which is me, tests and successes are subtracted from your body of argument. Insider tests against my will. Successful opponent makes a steal test or loses next action. Failed margin of failure is added to the. Um, okay, so you test, and if you're successful, um, I have to make a steal test and lose the next or lose the next action. Okay, if uh, I fail, the margin of failure is added as an advantage die to your next test. Okay, uh, so uh, so let me do my pointer. Uh, the point is he's using oratory, mm -hmm. and uh, um, he starts off with a, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, well, yeah. Normally, we would have these conversations with the emperor, and instead, we have you two. It's hard to understand what is holding this empire together, especially now that you've gone off and lost all the money, and then. Um, the uh, uh, Belkis is like, yeah, this scheme, how ridiculous is this? This idea that there doesn't have to be gold in the bank. What have you done with our gold? And um, Gree uh, steps in and says, ha, I, I could see that the dwarves were not brave enough to treat with us. They sent you poor lot to deal with us instead. Uh, okay, so now I'm going to roll the dice and see how much damage I did. Four, five, <laughs> six. Okay, this is a, and, oh, I've got a bunch of dice already out here. Let's see how much. One, two, three, four. You took four points of damage. Okay. So now you're at seven. Um, now, for your insight, is that um, uh, you, with an acid tongue and a biting wit, you may attempt to distract or dismay your opponents, and um, you have to insult them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's rich coming from the people who have lost the last three skirmishes and have pulled us in to help you. So I think what's holding the uh, country together is our military might, our willpower, and the machines that we put it together uh, over the last 50 years. What do you think? <laughs> Ollie spits out his water. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if any of that lands, because yeah. it's yeah. all down to yeah. the dice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, so put out the dice that are the, what skill are you using? That sounded uh, like intimidation. That is intimidation. Okay, so intimidation. put out, so how many dice is that? Uh, that's going to be eight dice that are going into intimidation. Wow, And then okay. I'm going to fork into uh, some falsehood, because I think yep. I'm like probably just yep. overplaying so that a little bit. I'm going to take the red dice. Um, oh, yeah. Okay, so go ahead and... Yeah, so yep. here's the yep. eight. And then put in uh, for your fork. Fork is there's two, because the two other one I'm falsing dice. into is an eight. All right, so. all right. We'll see. Okay, and um, you can help. If you like, if yes, you have, this is, uh, uh, I have ugly truth, which I believe uh, this is for helps insight? helps with uh, insight. Mm, that would be great. Okay, yes, well, I'm gonna pass that one die. Pass over. her. Uh, okay, if I just give you the one that I just gave her before, she's gonna. Oh, is you that one. your die? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so what? Uh, you have to join in the insulting. Then you have to say something. The ugly truth. What is the ugly truth here? Oh. <laughs> um. Uh, the ugly truth is, uh, you can't do this without us. You can't do it without the Empire. Okay. <laughs> All right. Great. Cool. Okay, so right. roll, roll the, the dice. Without the see, Empire. see how what? you get. We let you have that power. All right. Let's see. Oh my god. Whoa. And, and you're testing versus his will, which is six. I've seen a lot of sixes in there. Oh, wow. That is six. Two, three, four, five, six successes. Uh, yeah, you don't even have to use a fate. You got the six. You got yeah. the six. That's, uh, that's all you need. Okay. Uh, it's like, and your armor's not that shiny. <laughs> <laughs> Clean that up. <laughs> okay, 
so his steel is actually not that good, which is really good for you because um, his man cries it's in the kind middle of, of, kind of <laughs> bad. <laughs> this is perfect little heritage. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just like. <laughs> Sorry, Grease. It's like, oh, why did they send her? And it's like, well. <laughs> <laughs> For this very reason. Uh, yeah, so he's um, uh, he's a lot more nervous than he looks about being here. And mm -hmm. um, uh, his steel is only uh, four, uh, which is actually pretty bad because, um, let's see, let me make uh, I hear that, like, what is the average steel? Like, what does an average person have for steel? Four, four is kind of low. Okay. Uh, uh, Gree is uh, thinking maybe he should be in charge. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, there's uh, there's no forks or anything for a steel test, so. Or help dice. Kind <laughs> of did not cry. <laughs> oh my god. Full fail. <laughs> Full fail. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, so uh, I think I made his steel too low. Um, that was <laughs> he dies bad. Then there. No, no, a broken no. Heart. Uh, he, he, it's not going to be that bad. It's not going to be over, but it's, <laughs> it's not good. Um, he looks great, but like inside, he's like, I'm going to think about this for years. <laughs> dying inside. Just, a, just a okay. night, every, every, every day in the place. shower. Oh, this was in sight this. versus point. Right, okay. Um, if successful, opponent makes a steel test or loses next action. If fail, the margin of failure is added. To, well, you didn't fail. Okay, so um, so yeah, so he fails his steel test. So he's gonna his next action is uh, yeah. So he's gonna lose his next action. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's simple. That's what it is. Um, so now we go to the next action. Only he doesn't get to do anything, so he's defenseless and also. A uh, steel test. Oh, uh, oh! When you fail a steel test, it's even worse than that. Um, <laughs> uh, oh no! <laughs> when you, you fail a uh, steel test, you have to either, uh, you know, run away screaming, uh, swoon, uh, or uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the, the, the typical one is stand and drool. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so have to like actually fall prone. You could stumble or <laughs> something. <laughs> These are a little intense. <laughs> okay, it just falls over. Just to, so, oh, so they metaphor. they lose their second volley. Uh, so you, you your second volley. What did you script? Uh, point. Okay. Well, there there you go. Okay. So, what skill are you going to use uh, in in the point? Uh, I was going. I'm going to use persuasion and try to fork in rhetoric. Okay. Um, uh, so, so I haven't rolled in about five months uh, yeah, okay. in this campaign, so, <laughs> so I'm going to ask a couple of questions. So, yeah, yeah. So persuasion, what's your skill on persuasion? Uh, my persuasion is four. Okay, so you start with four dice. Four dice. And then what's your skill on rhetoric? Two. Two. Okay, so you add one die as a, as a fork okay. for, to the four. Um, that looks like five. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Was... Okay. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Oops. Um, uh, you can lend a help die if you like. I would love to add a help die. I'll send you one of my bitty ones. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, I think that's going to be it. Okay. Yeah. You can also spin Persona if you want, but um, there's going to be a lot of rolls, so maybe. Yeah, just, I think I'm going to uh, save that right now. Yeah. Okay. And my goal is to uh, how many how many successes do I need? Uh, just the more the better. However many successes you get is how much damage you do. Okay, and what classifies as success in this game? Four, five, or six. Four, five, or six. Each die is 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 evaluated separately. Oh my gosh, you only got one. I only got one. Oh, the uh, dice oh, pools, that's man. sad. <laughs> Ooh. You can literally have like 15 dice in something and they'll all be like two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. one success. Yeah. Oof. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we also have, um, by the way, you're scoring. Um, uh, some of these are going to be graduated tests. Isn't going to help you much, but the test you did versus the will uh, that oh. your uh, Ray, you, when you did your test was what was the skill? I forgot to use. I have uh, intimidate. Yeah, intimidate. Intimidate. Intimidate with a fork into falsehood. And you had a. Um, uh, I think we rolled. Oh, because we got to mark them. You rolled 
more than eight dice, I think. Yeah, I yeah. rolled ten dice. Yeah. Okay. So I rolled ten dice and I got six. That was just a routine test thing. Yeah. So um uh your persuasion, um uh you you get a routine test for that. Your skill is only four, so routine test count. You get a routine test. So, so the way that works, let me see your character sheet yeah, for a second. Okay, so the way that works is here where you have persuasion, mm -hmm. you see these rows? Okay. You get to fill in another dot by the R, which is routine. Okay. So you, you've got one already, so it's your second routine test. Yeah. To advance persuasion, you need four routine tests and either two difficult or one challenging. Okay. And then your persuasion will go up by one. Awesome. Okay. Um, well, let's go to the third volley. Okay, so you're going to do a dismiss. Uh, yeah, though, I mean, it'll yeah, be that's uh, a little. At this point, I think you came in a little early on this one. Yeah, I, yeah. They ended. So. <laughs> uh, that's okay. That's okay. Um, they're doing point because it's just so good. Uh, point versus dismiss. Let me look at my little matrix and see how, how it works. I'm like, okay. I know. Yeah. This is the, yeah. Okay. This is a really cool mechanic, though. Like, I haven't yeah. seen anything like this before in a game, and you mentioned this earlier on and when we first started talking about this game. Yeah. So this is like, it's cool to actually see it in the flow. I cannot wait to do this more. <laughs> oh, this is Okay, it's, uh, we both, it's just, we're both straight on attacking the other one. It's like we're, um, uh, you get two extra dice. So, um, and neither one of us have defense. We're both defenseless. So you're you're rolling to see how many successes you can get, and that's how much damage you do. Okay. I'm rolling to see how many successes I can get, and that's how much damage I uh, do. And the uh, four dismiss. You're doing the intimidation. Uh, yep, so I am doing yep. intimidation with a fork into rhetoric. Yeah, and he's going to do. Um, uh, he's going to switch to persuasion, mm. okay, which he's a little bit weaker at, but um, um, he wants, he has a reason. Okay, um, so let me, uh, do you, you want to go first? Dismissing, right? Let me go yeah, first. Yeah, I'm going for a dismiss. Do you need an extra die? Um, I think I have one from you. Can I count on your... Yeah, you can count on my either. vote. Okay, cool. So I have all my dice. Ready yeah, to go. You have all your dice. Do you want to use any persona for more dice? Uh, if you can get nine successes, you'll... That's nine how, successes out of ten. Like, I'm rolling... Like, I know, but if you explode sixes, I mean, it's not as it's near... It's not likely, for sure. Um, yeah, because I can... Exp Explode sixes. Mm -hmm. Can I explode it's, them after the fact? Or do I have yeah, to? you do that. Persona, you decide before you roll. Mm -hmm. Exploding sixes for, with a fate, you decide, you wait and see if you rolled any sixes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, maybe I'll just wait and see if I can just try to do some damage on my own. Just All right. See. Okay, and did you get the plus two dice for being a dismiss? Um, oh, no, I didn't. Um, okay, yeah. so here, I'll, I'll help you out. Nice. All right, let's see if I can just do some damage with the dismiss. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. Go for the nine. Let's Go see. for the jet. Oh, lots of sixes. Oh my god. Ray's gonna roll for me from now on. Let's see. It's pretty good. Not incredible, but that's a lot of sixes. So yeah. I could try to explode. You could spend a fate and get uh, three more dice. Six. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Why not? This seems important. It, it is my thing. It's the basically the only thing you, you do with fate is to explode sixes. So you <laughs> yeah. Know. So, I mean, like, right? I'm just like, what else am I gonna three. do with them? It's a pretty. It's a pretty important roll. You've got six. If all three of them come up. Oh. Quite. Oh. oh. So eight points of damage. That's Ooh. a lot of damage in a row. So you've reduced her body of argument to okay. one. This is like literally like like as she's like turning around like the whole thing that she's saying is she's just like, just like, on the point that my uh, colleague just said. Um, your defenses are weak from the series of militias that you militia problems you've been having for the last five years. Is it that have been draining your reserves, which is why I think you're asking for so much cash gold right now that you won't even play ball with the economic system that we're talking through. Also, it's not just that we don't have the gold. Nobody has the gold right now. In fact, the people who do have the gold, I already took it from them. So <laughs> she's just like and then starts going on and on and on um, in this vein. So. But nine, uh, eight points of damage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, you did help dice, so you get to uh, um, 
uh, throw in. The dismiss tactic is your, uh, it's, this is the cataclysmic and undeniable conclusion of your argument. Uh, you loudly declare your opponent knows nothing about the topic at hand. <laughs> it's a yeah. fool and a dullard and shouldn't be listened to any further. Something along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, for the ruler of a kingdom, I thought you'd be able to grasp the magnitude of the situation you're in. This is beyond your kingdom. This is the entire empire. This is a joke. You will honor your commitments. All right. Okay, there you go. Uh, okay, so now they also get to do the same thing. They're only getting uh, six dice. You guys are actually better bureaucrats than they are. Uh, <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> Look at me now, Dad. <laughs> There's a reason Kradava chose you. Um, okay, so. <laughs> That's not good. Two dice. <laughs> Two successes. <laughs> we will roll, use a fate. For one more, three. Okay, so your body of argument is reduced from seven to four. Uh, this is gonna end up in compromise. Um, the uh, King Laurent switches on the charm, mm. you know. <laughs> let, us, let us be civilized here. Um, we are all part of the same great empire that Emperor Kordava built for us. We all want this empire to thrive and prosper. We don't want to have to do anything rash. Uh, we don't want to have to separate from uh, the, the empire. That, that's a, that's a lose-lose scenario. But we do need to protect our interests. We do need operating capital. And you have over, you know, so many, you know, hundred thousand <laughs> dollars worth, not dollars, but um, worth of capital in your banks. We, you need to help us with something, you know. And Belka says, you know, <laughs> points over to the Colossus. That Colossus is made of obsidian. Let's, uh, let's take it down and sell it for parts. We, you, as the Empire, have huge amounts of wealth in hard current and valuable assets that could be liquidated to uh, help the empire. And then uh, Gree is... Uh, uh, Crying. No, 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 Gree is... No, he's, it's, he, Gree's doing okay. He's, uh, he's the warrior guy. Uh, the, the king is a little shaky. <laughs> the king is yeah, crying. It's, That's worse. It's the king that, that uh, Good was job, by the way. like... Uh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like... <laughs> uh, so, Gri is, you realize that my friend's nephew controls the, the sea, right? Do you really want to interfere with, do you still want your ships to be able to sail? And it's always us. So, like the compromise that's being posited here, because they what they wanted was pay us like this large sum. Are they proposing a compromise of a smaller sum, or do I need to counter with? No, them? we the, by, the, we have to go uh, one more round. One more round. Yeah, because okay. nobody's we go until the body oh, cool. argument okay. is is, is okay. zero. Nobody's Kill nobody's yeah. <laughs> and, 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 uh, no, no, nobody's dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I mean, I imagine there's a good chance it's uh, going to go, uh, but there is a problem. There is a problem. Uh, you, because you used dismiss but failed to end the argument, there's a penalty. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so yeah if you win, let's see. Sad face. If you fail to win the duel via this action, you hesitate for your next volley. Cross off the next action or skip the first volley of the incoming Ooh. exchange. Um, okay, Killing so. <laughs> Uh, well, I think we'll just use, um, if you don't mind, we'll save a little time and I'm just going to have him roll, the, roll a dismiss because now they, they think that this is, they think that victory is easily within hands. You have no way to defend them. This is a perfect time for de dismiss. Uh, so 
their dismiss is um, six dice plus two. So I just need to get four successes and then this uh, exchange is over. And if, if not, we'll, we'll script the next two. Yeah, easy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Duel of Wits, it's, it's usually, uh, it usually ends with like this, which is that uh, one side wins, but just barely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they won the argument. Uh, their, um, uh, their, their dismiss was, listen, <laughs> you, you have military power. We also have military power. We know about the legions. Don't think that we don't have very excellent uh, knight orders. And those legions don't have the Drazeldar with them anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you need us. You need us to play ball. If we don't come into line, if we don't go along with your scheme, then a lot of other countries are going to flip. People look to us as two of the most important countries that's not your neighbors and under your thumb. Uh, so, there you go. That's what they say. Mm. And it's compelling. And generally kind of the vibe of the room is that they've, they've won the argument, but just barely. Just barely. So, uh, yeah, because their body of argument is reduced to zero, but yours is at one. Uh, I mean the other way around. Okay, mm -hmm. there's a four, and um, you guys are zero. So what happens in this case is that the result is a compromise, and the um, if the uh, if the winner's body of argument is reduced to half, the um, uh, the winner must offer a compromise. If the winner's body of argument is reduced to uh, less than half, nearly zero, let's say. Um, Winner must offer a major compromise. Um, and I'm like, fine, we'll pay you, but it's like 25% of what you ask. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Relates us down to haggling <laughs> on an economic like, yeah. country level. Oh. It's like, no, not 10 pesos. I want it to be three. <laughs> Yeah, to, to bring them into uh, the fold, um, uh, you are going uh, to have to dip, it, you know, dip into some of the reserves that you do have that mm -hmm. you know, are not part of the gold gold reserves. But um, the... Uh, no, what they'll do is they'll take it in... Um, uh, Reduction of taxes. Oh. No. Yeah. So mm. they uh, they Divorce. they uh, you negotiate an agreement where they end up uh, uh, deferring um, about half the taxes and um, a quarter of the taxes are just forgiven. Okay. For, okay. Uh, but that's still a major comp a, a major compromise and a, like a reduction. So like yeah. while we are annoyed yeah. at it, we're like, okay. Yeah, it did work. Yeah. It, we did get something out of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not. Uh, uh, they're not. Uh, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, you wanted them to pay their taxes. Oh, and honor their existing trade agreements. And um, there's going to be some adjustments to uh, some of the trade agreements because uh, the. Um, Empire can no longer control the Tritons. The Tritons will uh, inevitably embark on a campaign of piracy. And uh, this is going to eat into the cost basis, blah, 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 you know, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, but they do stay in, they do say, well, we, they do agree to, agree to stay in the empire and to go along with the system for now. Set, we're here for Senate. You know, the, real, the real discussion is what's going to happen in Senate in a few mm. weeks and who's going to be the next emperor of the world. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, and, and Greece say, well, it's going to be you, obviously, mm. uh, King Laurent. <laughs> 
Like just very loudly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While he's feeling weak. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Something, sorry. Thinking of something else. Funny. <laughs> um. <laughs> this guy's gonna be crazy. He was just crying. <laughs> just crying on the ground, face down. <laughs> I'm like, and I can't be that what he actually did. It just can't be what he actually did. Okay, he, he just looked nervous. Next time I lose an argument, I'm gonna just wander away and face the corner. I think I'm just gonna like look in the corner. If you faint, you actually screaming? have to fall off yeah. of the camera. Faint. I could swoon. Danica made a king swoon in court today. Um, I'm actually making note of that in my Danica oh, notes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you can also piss yourself. That's another uh, thing oh, you can do no. in response to a fail. Quietly did that. You can't get up. Failed field test. You'll be the New, you'll be the new emperor, I'm sure. He's just sitting there, like he's like taking me away on my little chaise, <laughs> holding his shield here. Just like, <laughs> uh, um, so after you know, so after this is all kind of worked out, which uh, um, and people kind of disperse, uh, and um, uh, some people you know do, and and while some of the details are being worked out, um, uh, okay, by the way. Uh, Belkus was the guy that showed up with Zoom. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Remember I said there was a robed guy teleported yeah. you to. Oh, yeah. He was like the wizard. Oh, yeah. The wizard guy. Oh, it was Belkus? Yeah. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He showed oh. up as part of Lorenz Entourage here. So that was like a, that was like a cross country strike force thing. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so afterwards, Belkus uh, comes up, yeah, you know, come up to the, the two of you, and, uh, Ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, look There's at even that. more. Amazing excellent. detail on the clothes. We are just looking at the art for King Ooh. Laurent. That Love is it. excellent. That's what you made pass out. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> Just like, mm, not yeah. that intimidating, yeah, are yeah, you? Yeah, with yeah. your pretty little. <laughs> I didn't protect you, did it? <laughs> From my words. <laughs> Making kings cry. Uh, so Belkus comes uh, comes over to uh, uh, the two of you, and and uh, I mean his mood's completely changed. You know, mm -hmm. this was a. It's like, oh, this was a tough negotiation, and so I mean, this is just what. This is just another day at court. We're just gonna uh, get drinks afterward. Like, <laughs> yeah, he comes over and kind of. A knowing nod at you, but he's not gonna say any. You know, he's not gonna blow your cover. But uh, good to see you, Belkus. <laughs> Consul Yukos. Um, I'm. Uh, in, in spite of our disagreements, I'm quite impressed with this plan. It could work. Well, it has to, or else. <laughs> yeah, there was no chance we weren't gonna go along with it. <sighs> yeah. No. It will work. Uh, Consul, okay. No. Yeah. Um, can I have a word? Somebody would like to meet you. Absolutely. Yeah. Is it just because he's so pretty, or is it for other things? <laughs> <laughs> Can it be both? <laughs> have fun. <laughs> like, wander off. <laughs> um. You said he was drop dead gorgeous. I'm going to comment on it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just saying. Like Danica wanders off and she's like in this moment just kind of like making strategic circles around the room to try to get like near the king to see how many times he like flinches <laughs> she like gets near. <laughs> you can you know, indulge your fantasies there. Um, uh, he, um, uh, he, he takes you over to the, um, the, ah oh, damn, it, so can't, nobody's been able to think of the name of the, the thing. The, 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 the little the, thing that has the, the curtain that yeah, someone's behind that yeah, you carry. Yeah. It's got People that carry it. Yeah. I'll yeah. remember the word for it as I walk out. Palantine. Palanquin. Palan Palanquin? Palantine was the Palanquin. emperor in Star Wars. Uh, <laughs> Palpatine. <laughs> Palanquin. Palpatine. <laughs> a, a Palanquin, I think. Palanquin. That sounds right. And people Not had, a pangolin. People would chatter like, you stupid idiots. <laughs> this is this is what it's like to be a streamer, guys. This is like you say stupid things, you get stuck, you're you can't like, remember what, a word what that the hell? You knew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think a palanquin. That's what I'm gonna go with. That sounds right. Yeah. If if not, there's a thing like 
That, the, the, the Chaldea, it's called a palanquin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it's called. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, that's, how, that's, how that's, yeah, that's how canon works. That's how canon works. That's how canon works. That's how canon gets developed. <laughs> Uh, so uh, it takes you over and um, to the palanquin uh, and um, you know and uh, draw the curtain. Yeah, Leanne is inside. I um, my eyes. By, by the way, if they were going to lose, I was going to pull that out earlier. But yeah. since they were, they said they won. <laughs> uh, I, without hesitation, reach my hand in for hers. Yeah, she. Uh, yeah, she goes to. She she looks like um a little confused, and then yeah, t touches your hand. Are you okay? Yes. Come see me. Where? Uh, at the, at the fortress, at our fortress. Do I know where this fort is? Uh, is you know that they came in and built a, that constructed. Oh, they're, so they're actually. Oh, they're actually with them there. This is okay. Yeah. That makes yes, absolutely. Okay, I'm on board. Yeah, Back. yeah, yeah. Come see me. I will. All right. Okay. And closes the curtain, and they leave. Uh, definitely kind of walk back a little, maybe betraying a little bit, like a, his face is a little more shooken up yeah. than he. Ah, uh, Steve says palaquin. Palaquin. Thank you, Steve. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that what I said? Yeah, I'm pretty mean. sure that's what I said. Tomato, tomato. Yeah, <laughs> palaquin. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Okay, palaquin. <laughs> um, okay, so we leave that there. Um, so you want to go see, see her later? Yes, 100%. <laughs> I mean, you're really busy. You sure you're going to make time? Yeah, I'm going to make time <laughs> to see the future emperor of this wonderful empire. <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, Belkus, you know, he kind of kind of blinks at you, you know. It's kinda, oh, yeah, yeah. Wizards. Yeah. Uh, yeah wizards. So, okay, so maybe that evening. Uh, well, Belkus actually says, yes, why don't you call upon us at, uh, you know, 9 o'clock. And that's what I do. 9 p.m. tonight. Yeah. I, I go back to my, my, my space, get prepared, yeah. and then head over. Oh, yeah, you could squeeze in another three meetings yeah. before. Yeah. Definitely got to do some more work before then. <laughs> A couple more duels of wits beforehand. Um, uh, okay. So when you um, arrive at the fortress that they uh, instantly built in the backyard of Celestia, um, you know, and there's guards around, you, the whole thing just kind of shimmers of magic. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the shimmering, um, the parent, the, the perts, which are people apparently are called perts, the perts have a thing for things that glow. Okay. Their capital city is called the City of Gleam. <laughs> they, you know, the, the, the white glistening towers, the, all this sorts of light. So yeah. this, uh, this, this fortress is kind of a glistening tower. Okay. And uh, the, the guards are out there in their beautiful glistening armor, kind of like uh, Excalibur style, you know. <laughs> and uh, Gree, who's Amian, mm. but uh, the ally, he, uh, he um, greets you at the front door. Hello. I don't think we've met personally, but it's delightful to meet you. Oh, delightful to meet you. I can't do a <laughs> French accent to save my soul. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you as well. Oh. Wish we met under better circumstances. I think these are great circumstances. Well, the, um, the fall of the empire is not usually what I would call great circumstances. Uh, it's opportunity, my friend, opportunity. Like the way you think. <laughs> I think there's going to be many great opportunities for those willing to seize them. Come. A friend of yours is waiting. I nod and follow. <laughs> All right. So uh, he takes you uh, into uh, into this into this castle, mm -hmm. a beautiful shining castle, glowing castle, and. Uh, 
go through a couple corridors and into a nice, uh, you know, through a hall and into a, 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 a chamber that is a, like a very nice sitting room. And um, uh, Princess Leanne is sitting on a chair. There. When you come in. How have you been? I'm good. It's great to see you. It's great to see you too. <laughs> see, you know, she uh, like stands up. Yeah. Uh, I, I walk over, grab her hands, and, and just just go down to one knee, just to, just a little kneel. Okay. Oh. Thank you. Uh. Okay. Uh, please, you can rise. Stand up. What's happened? These are my allies. They saved me from, you saved me from death. Do we know and who was after you? I'm sure it was, I'm, I'm sure it was Tihomir. Tihomir. Removing the competition. And of course he wants to be the next emperor. To be the next emperor, he has to remove the competition. And you should be the next emperor. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. I hope that, uh, we are hoping that you might advocate for us in the Senate. For you? Yes. Yes, absolutely. You have my heart and soul, yes. Excellent, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy you're all right. Me too. I am also happy to be all right. I'm glad, that thanks to you, I escaped from that certain death. I will never forget that. Good. We must, uh, we need a friend on the council. We need to find out who is supportive of Tihomir as empire, emperor, and who is not. Who is, who are our allies on the council? Obviously, Keras is our ally. We can count on him. Uh, so Keras is, um, uh, he wasn't in, he hasn't been in a script yet, so you, you're, you as Marcus wouldn't have known, mm -hmm. but your character would certainly know who Karras is. He is the, uh, the consul of the Great Sea, and he's, oh. he's a pert. He's from Perrin. Okay. So he is actually a duke in his, his title in Perrin is that, of a, uh, is that he's a duke. And he, um, uh, um, and Perrin is considered a very powerful naval Kingdom in Chaldea, which has made sense why they threatened us a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's it kind of kind of going along with the Britain theme, yeah. you know, uh, British inspired. So uh, that makes sense to you. <laughs> so uh, you can count on Karis as an ally, um, and we need to recruit more allies, but not just in the council, but also in the Senate. We, we work on that, but since we are not allowed in the Council of Consuls meetings, we don't have standing in the Council of Consuls, um, we hope that you will do what you can to uh, help us determine who we can count on. All the councils are, the councils, the consuls carry more weight than a typical senator. I will do this. You have my word. I'll find our allies, I'll consolidate our power, and I'll report back to you everything I find. Thank you. I appreciate it. How did you come to be with them? Um. Who is your mysterious savior? You. You were. You know what I mean. There was a woman. Oh, 
Yes. Tasia. Tasia, that's what it is. I was trying to find it. Yeah. I don't uh, I don't really know who Tasia is other than a an immortal mm. friend of the late emperor, friend of my father. And she brought me to uh, the city of Gleam. If you trust them, I trust you. If you trust me, I need. I'll do I, this. I trust you. I need friends. Consider it done. Okay. Well, we can cut that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same. Um. Yeah. You. You, you know. You kind of. I think there's probably you that wish she would have hugged you like you did. So you yeah, did last there's time. definitely would some. It, would have been a little bit more intimate with you, yeah. you know, not intimate, intimate, but you know, you know like I mean. just a little bit more um, touchy, you know. Yeah. And she Something's wasn't. Something's a little, yeah. She wasn't. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Good to know. Okay. So. Uh, Donica. Well, first of all, I have. Uh, uh, did you have something you would like to be proactive about? Um, uh, you know, if you. Uh, yes, there okay. is something I want to be proactive about. Because okay. um, basically, I'm looking into like Tiamir in general. I'll just kind of get like his vibes on like where he's standing. What are the things he cares about right now? We know he's vying to be the next emperor because he's at the stand in right now. Basically, um, but I want to influence him to, you know, not put more dwarves on the economic council where I have to deal with them. So I'm basically, uh -huh, right. the proactive thing that I already rolled, like yeah. started to get the ball rolling on is let's find out what he cares about so that I can influence him. So I can get influence him to not have dwarves on there. So I'd like to keep moving that forward. Um, do you want to go, uh, um, do you have an idea of how you'd like to approach her or do you just want to go talk to him? I've already got some people on it, so they're looking into the, um, who are the other candidates, so I have them, like, looking into that. I would like to go talk to him to just kind of, like, read the room a little bit on, like, what is your temperature on the dwarves just electing somebody new? Just to see if he's, like, I don't care one way or the other, I could be persuaded, or if he's, like, no, like, absolutely, it needs to be that way. I just want to get his temperature check, basically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh... So, uh, to see to Amir, it's going to be a uh, circles test. Okay. Um, so you have a circles, I think we established earlier, mm -hmm. four. Yep. And the, he is, he's in your station. You, you don't have to, you're not going to get the right now, right here penalty that you did with the Anton. Um, you, you, basically any time during the week that he's free to see you, I assume is good for you, or you have flexibility on your schedule. Um, uh, yeah, I think I'm just going to say that's an ob two, okay, okay? Uh, to, to get in to see him. And uh, if it's a, um, if you fail the roll, the penalty for failure here is that, um, is that he's basically dodging you because okay. he, yeah, yeah, for whatever reason. Just like, like, no, uh, I don't have a conversation it, yeah, like, about this. I like have other things. he has an, he has a, 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 an idea, right or wrong, of what it is you want to talk about. He, uh, maybe this, maybe he thinks it's something else. I don't want to talk about economic theory, <laughs> <laughs> which is fair. Yeah, 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 so yeah, fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thinks that maybe you should stay focused on the task at hand. Um, <laughs> so. Okay, you have circles test, it's a, uh, you have four dice, it's an ob two. Okay, all right, just four? All right. I think so, that's all your right. circles test, right? All right, circles let's see what skill. happens. Um, I've got just one success with a six. I mean, I could explode it, it seems a little silly, but. Yeah, no, it gives you a 50 chance of, 50 percent chance of succeeding if yeah. you, if you. Uh... Good, why not? Let's do one more. Yeah! That two. turned failure into success. Let's do it. Um, okay, so his, he's at the Sunshine Citadel, uh, which is his palace. 
uh, it's, you know, up on the hill. It's a pretty nice place. Uh, you have an appointment, you go there. Um, uh, there is, uh, when you go there, um, yeah, there are, you know, there's a lot of people there that want to see him, right? There, yeah. And and it's like he's it's like he's holding court. You know, he is the the ruler of Bruch. Yes. So he has a, has a kingdom to run and an empire to to run. <laughs> and uh, the Grand Prince of Bruch is his title, yes. in addition to his consul title. And um so yeah, you're escorted, you're, you're greeted, you're taken care of, you have to wait a while, very inefficient, <laughs> chopping at the bit to, <laughs> to get back to work. Uh, and then you're escorted in to see him. And um, uh, his, uh, yeah, so he, he clears the room for you. Yeah, you know, not quite sure. Uh, <laughs> now I can do a Stefano accent. <laughs> <laughs> you follow your bliss. <laughs> I can do a Stefan Picorni accent. Oh, Consul Yukos, welcome, welcome. I hear you had a, a challenging meeting with the Perts and the Amians. Oh, you know what it is. They always are back to back with one another and then we're negotiating from a back foot because, you know, we lost all the money. So... <laughs> A little embarrassing, but uh, it's okay. We managed to get some pretty good uh, concessions from them. We still had to cough up a bit uh, in tax law, but I'll close it up eventually. Uh, they came to see me as well. I think they're, uh, um, they seem to be um, lobbying to uh, become the next emperor, either Laurent or somebody. Yeah, I, they did loudly declare that at one point, which, I mean, Laurent, I don't know, he seemed a little nervy. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I don't want to take up too much of your time because obviously it is a premium right now, but there's something I'm working on on the economic side of things, and I need to know where you stand mm -hmm. on it before I start losing mm -hmm. too much political weight into it. Okay. I am not happy with how things went down with the dwarves and how they've handled... Um, how they handled uh, losing the gold, and then um, how they've handled things afterward. There's an opening for the head of the banking system right now, and I am curious how, how high your confidence is in letting them just roll someone in from their side of things. Mm, yeah, it's, um, well, it's a, uh, that's a very good question. How, how do you, 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 you're clearly thinking that maybe it's time for a change in perspective. Everything is changing, so I figure we might as well actually build things from the ground up and create a system that is a little bit more resistant to uh, implosion than the one that we've had now. So I think that um, the dwarves were part of that weakness, and I would like to um, correct that weakness and fix that uh, going forward. Um, I'm, again, it's not anything against them particularly, just that they've always done things a particular way, and I feel like they don't have the flexibility to deal with what we need to do in the future. I might bring some candidates to the table. Obviously, if I can't find anybody who's better than the candidates they lean forward. Consul Yukos, mm -hmm. what you need to do is you need to get the other consuls who have sway in the realm of money, like Consul Sweef, Consul, yes, all of my friends. <laughs> Consul, Consul Loritz, obviously Consul Gildzon will support an, another dwarf and, and uh, assume that that will be the case, you're not going to persuade him, but get the other uh, economically minded consuls to unite around a candidate um, that uh, that the, the the body could the that the council could support. I'm very confident. I would be that. very compelling if you could do this. Okay, thank you. It's very helpful. I've got at least two, I think, in my back pocket. There is a wild card, though. Well, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> if we're talking about the bank, can't be somebody too. You know, crazy. You know, uh, the good thing about Garl is that he was 
true to his clan name, was steadfast. He was a steady, steady guy. And you may not, none of, we may all be a little upset at the dwarves, but we do need to show respect to his clan for his death. He was, they called uh, his reputation, the banker's banker. Um, you won't find a dwarf in Chaldea that didn't look up to him. It's true. So. I promise to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of taps you. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's a, like a big concession <laughs> from Canada. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you. You know, it's, uh, this is, you know. Um, but yeah, I think that we have to cast this as, not as a reaction to the loss of the gold, although, of course, it's to some extent a reaction to the loss of gold. We have to present this as, um, you know, an opportunity for uh, someone new to be on the council. Um, the doors don't have to lose their, um, you know, they, they still have a bank. It just doesn't have any money in it. <laughs> yes, oh that's rather Oh, it's so sad. I shouldn't be laughing, but uh, just the irony of having a bank with no money. Um, money is power, and they don't have any right now, which yeah. there's probably someone else that we could cash that in with. So the, When you... Uh, he takes, I want to show you something. He takes you over to a, a balcony that overlooks the city. Mm -hmm. And he points to the Imperial Palace. And uh, the, um, uh, the Hutuweret of Set and the Ministry of Justice and the Hall of the Ambassadors, the Senate Discourse. Do you know who owns these buildings? I mean, I assume I do. <laughs> You might not, but uh, yeah, you probably do. Given your he, the, the dwarves own these own a lot of the buildings and land that's here. So even as not an institution necessarily, they're still an institution. Yeah, don't uh, they have considerable resources? In spite of the loss of the bank, uh, the dwarven the influence of the dwarves. Their wealth is it's great. It's great enough that uh, the emperor put two of them on the console, but no elves. That is interesting. So we must walk carefully. But I am sympathetic to what you're... It would be an appropriate response to their mistake. Let for them clear. to lose a little it's political not influence. Entirely punitive. It is also because consolidation of power in this moment seems like it will be very important for the emperor, the empire in general. This new empire that we are building, I would like to have a little bit more power on the economic side under us. That would make me feel better. Consul Yukos, I have the utmost respect for you and confidence in your ability, and I um. Hope that uh, you will support me as in Senate mm -hmm. to be the next emperor. Okay, all right. I will keep that in mind. I can't imagine what candidates are going to come forward that will present more stability than yourself, um, quite frankly. Uh, it's a mess out there. Thank you. Appreciate that. Will not be forgotten. Appreciate it. Well, again, I won't take up too much of your time. I won't you. Get, go, go, go working on these things. I have lots of fires to put out. <laughs> yes, I know, I'm sure you're very busy. Yes. Okay. Cool. All right. Great. I'm just going to shit off, and basically she's her thing. Her new goal is, like, make sure that Anton and Swift are on my side and also try to get, I think it sounds like it's Ollie and anybody else for economics. Uh, the, there's six consoles, but four, four of them that are, aren't dwarves that are economics. Yes, it's, yeah, it's the two of you yeah. and Tomas Swift and Anton Loritz. Okay. And you have relationships with both I of do. them. So actually, yeah, it's Ollie that I have to be like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's up? <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I have something that I'm going to put, uh, put across your path in, in a minute, but I'm going back to uh, Marcus for a moment. Do you have something that you would like to proactively pursue? Is there something that's come up that you would like to, okay, I, I really gotta, want to go do this thing? No. Um, I, right now I'm, I'm kind of like sorting through the, the admin of like, 
going, I'm like looking who I'm going to go after, uh, after speaking to Leanne. So I'm kind of sorting through that right now. So if you have an idea, I would love to take it, but. Well, uh, you do have a belief about exchanging, uh, about improving the exchange rate for the summation Mina, Mina. to the Imperial Gold Sovereign. Uh, and now, and this is an issue that you would have to uh, clear with, uh, this is something that uh, you feel like the responsibility here of exchange of affecting exchange rate is probably primarily a responsibility uh, of the central bank. But with Garl dead and there are no actual imperial consul, there's just an acting person. Mm. Um, Which uh, is Beulah, the Beulah. dwarven woman that was a former lover of his. Um, you think that the, you know, probably the person that you uh, have to convince is Toma, <clears throat> and you also had a, um, uh, yeah. So you could go talk to him about that if you wanted to. You could broach that topic, see how if you uh, see how he reacts. Uh, or do you want me to come back to you? Do you want to think yeah, about that Yeah, would second? you go just give me a quick sure. second, please? Yeah, Sorry about I'll that. come back to you. Okay, well, yeah. I don't know how quick it'll be. I'm going back okay. to Ray. <laughs> I can yeah. go jet over to Anton and uh, Toma, and like, I'm like, in, maybe possibly I'm in a meeting with them as he walks up. Is that basically I'm talking about, okay, talk to the Tiamir and um, want to float something by you, and then just start basically floating them the idea of like, I'm going to look into people. Yeah, I could, I, I could see that maybe you guys have, uh, you know, have, have a, a click. Have, have, <laughs> we have a click. <laughs> we straight up have a click. I don't know. <laughs> have, have a, yeah, have a, a drink at the end of the day or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, 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 we're all talking economics here, so we're definitely still like on task in the like yeah. group yeah. area or whatever, but yeah. like this is me, like kind of being like, hey, I have my, you know, my aides working yeah. on something. I'm not sold 100% on it or anything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but if we're moving forward with an entirely new system that you put together, one that is already ousting the dwarves from power, I figured we might as well just make it official. And we lobby to have somebody else be, uh, I think it's head of the bank, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the imperial, yeah, the uh, console of the imperial, of the uh, central bank. Yes, basically so I'm just like, again, if we can't find a better candidate and it doesn't make sense, I'm willing to back off on it, but um, right now, um, we have a whole new system in place. I feel like a lot of people will feel better if there's a new head of the bank in place to show new course of direction and also consolidation of power. So, uh, so I thoughts? think Anton and Toma. <laughs> yeah, they're both relationships of you. That's funny. They're, <laughs> it's almost like I was so like, my guys, department. <laughs> they're, they're, they're friends. Um, you, by the way, you know that the two of them uh, do have a topic that they don't see eye to eye on. And by the way, just one thing you got to know about Anton, yeah. um, he clashes with your belief about, um, uh, let's see, what was the term you used? True believers? Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet he does. <laughs> he, uh, he worships that. Yeah, well, she's not like, again, he, when I say true believers, it's not said it is zealots of any belief system at all. He's pretty, it can be for a government. <laughs> he's pretty committed to okay. set. He's not a priest, okay. you know, but you know that uh, like when um, uh, in the last council meeting, you might remember from the script, when yeah. Farina said everybody stand up for the invocation, you know, he was the first oh, yeah. to jump out of his seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And he's he's played, he was played he's by devoted. Kyle by Kyle Robinson, who yeah. came in and played uh, played him. Uh, he's a pretty stern guy, but you've gotten to know him real well, and you have a good relationship with him. Um, but yeah, he just so you know, that's. Um, uh, I gotta be on the down. But you guys are all like, I think the fact that you have a relationship with each of them has brought them a little bit mm -hmm. closer together, and you all have this common academic. You know, you all, you all have this really. He's got a very sharp legal mind. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, and you're just really good at going out there and bringing in the money because you're scary as shit. Scary. <laughs> Intimidating. <laughs> and, uh, give me the money, or else. <laughs> yeah, give me the money. You, uh, <laughs> or I'll show up with Zoom and steal it. No, no, um, I literally. No, no. <laughs> You've probably. Have you told anybody about that? Have you told them? No, I've that? not told anybody about that. I just like literally like got the money and then it was like, hey, look, Zoom got all this money for us, and you know I. Supported him Zoom. or something, but I. <laughs> Zoom doesn't. Wait, well, was he totally on the down low about that? Oh, hell yeah. Okay, well then yeah, I never mentioned yeah, it. I was yeah, just like, look, yeah, money that, they paid. Yeah, yeah, they no paid. questions. Like, Don't worry about it. Yeah, I literally just was all like, oh look, the backlog of taxes came forward in the mail. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <still> not. <laughs> no one. <laughs> I mean, your staff is like, what? No, I'm just all like, don't at, don't worry about it. I'm just very good at my job. I sent a stern letter. <laughs> <laughs> We know we're doing well when we get uh, Joe laughing there, back, uh, tech guy, <laughs> and he laughs because we're doing all right. Okay, so um, you also know that Toma is, by the way, very friendly with the elves. Just FYI. So these guys are very different characters, but they have a, a um, but they get along because it, it's it, as long as you guys. Keep the conversation about money and economics and all stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, okay, so when you ask about this, um, thinking about it, yeah, I don't see either one of them as super in love with the dwarves. So, um, well. I'd be like, do you have, I don't think, think it would naturally come up, do you have candidates? Uh, that's what we were going to ask you. Uh, that's what I'm I would ask him. Working on candidates right yeah. now. Again, if we can't find someone better, the stability of the dwarves is a benefit in that they've been around for a long time. It's just that nobody views them as a good thing right now. Mm. And that could be bad in the short term. And so we need to get through the short term to have a long term. So I'll work on that. Try to bring someone forward. If you think of anything, let me know. But I just wanted to know that I could count on your vote, so to speak, on it. I have to, I have to talk to Ollie. I feel like I haven't talked to Ollie enough. Does he like being called Ollie? <laughs> Is it familiar <laughs> that I call him Ollie? <laughs> he really does want people to call him Ollie. So, I don't know what his full name is. <laughs> no, kidding, no, you okay. guys know it's, it's, it's okay. It's his yeah. formal name. That's, it, that's his formal name. <laughs> the fact that, like, in her mind, she's been calling him Ollie the whole time because it's more efficient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, he, he actually does want to be called Ollie. So, oh, yeah, right, right. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. calling that in his face, and I didn't think that there was any. <laughs> yeah, you should. You know, you should. Yeah, get, he's. Yeah, he's always off to his, to himself a little bit. You should like. Why don't you see if we can get him to join us for drinks? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, our late night drinks, our midnight. It's probably you're probably like after work yeah, drinks are like, probably at midnight yeah. now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we're yeah, drinking. Where, into the air. where is he? I'm I'm not entirely. Somebody sure. said they saw him going over to Celestia. He went and talked to the, who was the who was the person in the palanquin? I don't know. I didn't see. I just assumed. It's Anton, because Anton says this. Tom Tomas like, what are you talking about? Yeah, the Amians and the Pert showed up. There was somebody in a palanquin. Never saw who it was. Yeah, Falcus looked all smug about it, kind of, but like no really. You didn't. Indication. They never announced who the person was. Well, no, no. Uh, Anton says, "Yeah, but I saw Oli went over and." Yeah, yeah. He said, like, "Okay, I mean, Oli, Oli went over and talked <laughs> to the." To, We're trying to be nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he went over. He went over there. Uh, that's what my. Um, my spies say. Interesting. <laughs> okay, I saw him wander off. I guess I yeah. didn't assign anything to it. But. Yeah, well, let's uh, uh, we'll put the word out. <laughs> top, top, all, all, all the peoples. <laughs> Everybody can sneak up on yeah, Ollie. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's one of Ollie's uh, subscribe. I mean, I mean the, it, like you said, you guys all have a staff, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And so, like, one of the staff, yeah, yeah. Go talk to the staff of Ollie, get him to come, come join. So, do you, you get the word when you come back? Do you come join them? You get the, I think the I do. So the staff person yes. like, um, hey, uh, you know, your cohorts, uh, the, uh, no, consuls, Yukos, Sweef, and Luritz uh, would love for you to join them for their, that's a very elite uh, thing. This is um, quite something that they've <laughs> invited. This is a great opportunity for our department. The three of them have been like tight as thieves for... Um, not to imply anything. This is okay. <laughs> I famously they, they, got rid of all the thieves. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they finally, they've finally invited you to come join them for drinks. You should go. Yes, I think I will. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. How'd it go with the? 
I just can't look at and look and just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> like, not a word. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so okay, so let's frame forward to you showing up for drinks. Sounds and, good. Uh, uh, the the Anton and Toma and Donica are there and uh, and. Uh, Anton. Anton's a very serious, but he always mm. looks pretty darn serious. Um, like you're kind of surprised that anybody really like hang out with hang this out with guy. Uh, he's, he's, he takes life pretty serious. He's, you know, he's a lawyer. You know, like I was like, all the personality must be located somewhere else in this triad. <laughs> um, but so you see him actually. He's had, had a couple drinks and. Mm. And and, he, and uh, you know everybody says hi and welcome. Says so. Who was in the palanquin? Who did? Who, you went over and talked to whoever it was. Who, who was? We're all dying to know who was in the palanquin. <laughs> oh, I, mm. <laughs> Here, have a drink. <laughs> you, you can't just rush right into the question. You have to like warm up to it. Honestly. Oh, is that what we're supposed to do? <laughs> So I, I'm the socially For a politician, you're very bad at this. I'm the socially <laughs> awkward one. Well, <laughs> Tomas. <laughs> Tomas pours on the chair. Ch uh, welcome, o Oli. Have a seat. <laughs> uh, well, maybe we should talk about something else. How do you feel about dwarves? At the moment, I think I feel about as much as you do about them. I'm... I'm Probably the most sympathetic to the dwarves or anybody at the table. Maybe you mean as much as. I've made no secret. Donica. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all on a first name basis when yeah, you're like I this, so. when it's an informal yeah. setting. Yeah. Informal I, setting. I, I think uh, Donica is. Uh, uh, I may have loudly declared and yelled at people, so I think everyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> I think most people know what Donica's thinking yeah. about a lot of things. <laughs> if she wants them to, she is. Especially the King of Perrin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I think he did admirably well. <laughs> I have had people actually so, cry. <laughs> so, Toma says to you, so you say you went and talked to Tihomir. I what, did. what did he say? What did he say about the, he the said, dwarves and the position? He said a few things. The first thing is that if we all show a united front on it and we think that it is the best move economically, he'll support our decision, whatever that decision will be. So it lies with all of us to decide if who we want to be in that position. Again, I'm not against there being a dwarf there necessarily. I'm just saying that there's more opportunity in a not and, being one. And by the way, reading rule, Toma is probably considered the best politician mm -hmm. in the council, yeah. next mm -hmm. to perhaps Tihomir himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so just say. Yeah. So Pretty Toma good. immediately goes to that angle and says, well, if we want a. Um, if we have the power, we can have a little alliance here on this topic. If we have the power to appoint the next consul of the central bank, yes, of course, it has to be somebody who looks good on paper as a right resume, mm -hmm. and also should be somebody who can give us what we want. What do we want? What does this disparate group? What could, I know. What could <laughs> <laughs> what could we all possibly agree on? I mean, Danica's very straightforward. She's all like, I want somebody who's going to do the job properly and do what we say with this new system you're rolling out. That's what I want. <laughs> what other things do you want? Because <laughs> she knows you guys want things. <laughs> I would like to see in, well, short term, <clears throat> Sybil and Ariadne cleared of all charges. Mm. What, Sybil cleared of all charges? I thought she was running around. <laughs> you, you, you want her cleared of all charges. Yes, of course. Okay. They're innocent. Mm. Sybil, Sybil and Ariadne were both in love with him. I mean, they... they uh, uh, for that matter, I want to see the same thing. I don't believe that they are responsible for his death. Yeah, they, they weren't. They, Sybil was sharing his bed. She ran and she was the first one to the throne room because she woke up and realized he wasn't there. Yeah. I mean, and in Eric, terms of pure power, do we believe? I mean, if they were in a one-on-one -on -one fight, honestly. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, a one-on-one -on -one fight, I mean, it's nobody could. I, I, I don't, there's nobody in Chaldea that could stand up in a one-on-one -on -one fight. 
I will admit. I among don't. Among I mean, all of except this, an elder dragon, maybe. The pall of who actually killed him is the question that everybody is. Yeah. We can't answer, and we won't be answered, but I don't love that it is unanswered, because that means there's something or someone extremely powerful, unaccounted for. It is the question of our age. I, not my question, because I'm the economics person, so... <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see an elf on the council. We don't have one. And, because Ooh. there isn't one, they could throw a lot of power our way just to have an inn. Yes. To protect their inn. I like this. Mm -hmm. It's a good line. And also it could be uh, spun as a unity. Um, yes. Unity and uh, consolidation of power. And then additionally, again, the dwarves are in a bad spot. They were just gifted, again, from our emperor, two seats on the council just for good behavior, basically. Mm -hmm. Well, there's been, quote unquote, bad behavior. He's dead. I think it's perfectly fair that they lose one of their seats. Fair to me. Might be a hard sell, but getting an elf on the council will be good right now. Mm -hmm. uh, Anton, like, well, there's already two people from you know, the church on the council. I, I could tell I would be overreaching, suggesting uh, a third. <laughs> they have so much power already. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing quite well. You're doing well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <that's... laughs> Tomas is two, three, Anton, because I think I need to count you as part of that faction <laughs> also. <laughs> Pulsan, Farina, and you. It's like, I, I'm a, a religious man. That's true. That's fine. Yes, do you like Farina? Just like as a person. I get that she's like super powerful, but like, and very competent, but like as a person. Is she any fun? She's like, she's fun. <laughs> all, all, he, all he does like kind of subtly lean in because he's interested in this. He doesn't want to admit that he's very interested in this, but has had thoughts. I, she seems pretty stern. You think she's stern. Well, <laughs> that says something. But I have faith. Uh, Set would not allow her to continue in her position if he was disappointed in her performance. So I have to trust in that. Understood. So if Holson <laughs> fell out of power, it's because Set doesn't like him. Tomaka rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> you guys see like the dynamics here yeah. in this group. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. All right. So we're thinking an elf. For an elf from the council. We can agree with that. Yes. Right. I'm not sure we. I'm guessing there might be some differences of opinion of who the next emperor should be. I mean, yes. It's pretty I mean. straightforward for me. Well, who do you want to be the next emperor, empress? There are so many candidates. I think it falls within the bloodline. Makes sense. <laughs> and then others feel different. I want whoever is going to provide the most stability for, again, this economic machine that must roll forward. Whoever that is, <laughs> great. Obviously, Tamir has been around for a while. Mm. We're also pitching to him to make sure that this whole economic thing goes the way that we want. So, if we do want all of this to roll forward again, I'm seated right now tentatively with Tamir, and that he's driving forward the stuff that we need, and he's a face of stability in the short term. But I have no idea how long this political shuffling is going to go for who's going to be the eventual leader. Tomas says, "I'm, I'm thinking of Tani." Yeah. Tawny. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. All right. Take a drink. <laughs> I was, thought maybe you even had a few. <laughs> okay. Well, this is um. Uh, yeah. Maybe this is not the thing that we will agree upon. But if we can agree upon a proper elf candidate, yes. uh, what do you think of Lenora? Lenora. Lenora. So, Sarah's character? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do we know about Lenora? Does she you look know. good on paper? Mm -mm. Was she one uh, of the ones caught singing with the rest of the elves when the emperor was killed? Well, all the elves were singing, yeah. so I mean, that's an issue. Paint them all with them. I don't gosh. think that, um, here's what I think. I think we need to tell Tihamir that we are, let's drag this out a bit. Mm -hmm. Tell them that we are taking it very seriously. We're gonna look for candidates, but we've gotta wait until this thing with the elves gets resolved. Right now, the elves are in Amandela's line of fire. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yes. She's got, and you know Amandela, she's, I think we're all a little scared of Amandela. So, so, <laughs> or should be. <laughs> no accounting for intelligence. <laughs> uh, I mean, if the elves, if the elves somehow killed the emperor, this is uh, Toma talking. Mm-hmm. First of all, I can't believe it. There's no way. The elves didn't. But there is a great mystery here. And until this mystery is solved, uh, no one's going to, um, uh, it's going to be a very unpopular to try and put an elf on the council. Mm-hmm. So we, let's just drag out the process. Let's create a, let's start creating a list mm-hmm. and list and of candidates mm-hmm. and We'll, uh, and say we want to talk to them, we'll just create a process and let this linger for a while and, at this, in, and use this. And knowing that this process is going on, Tihomir, I'm sure Tihomir would love to just leave the position vacant for as long as possible because that's mm-hmm. one less person that could possibly oppose him mm-hmm. on something. It's true. So it helps him politically in the short term, and it helps us try to figure things out, give the elves enough time to unscrew their situation so that we could put one of them in the seat. Yeah. Okay. All right. I like this. Good plan. Okay. Um, I think I'm kind of starting to feel like we can wrap up, unless you've come up with something that you would like to um, no, I think respond I'm good. to. I think I'm good right now. Okay. Um, I'm just taking notes on who's talking about TMA and what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I do want to establish something before we go that maybe it'll come up later. You have a relationship with uh, a guy named Dario. Yeah, right. He is a priest of, uh, of, um, yeah. uh, Volo, I think. Uh, Volos, yeah. who you worship. Yeah. Right? Quietly. <laughs> um, I. Now, as a relationship, you have the ability to access him because it's a, it is quietly because it is an illegal. Yeah, yeah. It's it's an illegal. She's very st- much like yeah, everybody's God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you are religious, right? To Volos, right? You, yeah. You secret in secret, you worship him. Yes. Right. You know, correct me if I'm off on the wrong path here. <laughs> um. Uh, so, as a relationship, you have the ability to see him when you want. So, like, but since he's like a, an illegal sort of character in a way, like oh a, um, a, 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 the Setites would call him a heretic yep. mm-hmm. or an iconoclast, something, um, I thought I wanted to kind of set out how you contact each other mm-hmm. if you want to. So, um, he, uh, there is there the University of Saratov. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, Universities, academia, often hotbeds of you know rebellion and uh, critical thinking and um, illicit you know anti-establishment uh, behaviors. The, the University of Saratov is no exception. Uh, when you want to um, uh, visit, when you want to reach out to Dario for some reason, uh, you tend to you go there to the university. This is how you do it, and you visit a professor, Teodara. Teodara is a professor of economics at the University of Saratov. So you always have something. It's really easy to go and pretend to have an important conversation, like to go there and ask some sort of academic question about economics. And, um, but, but your visit is a signal uh, somehow to Dario that you want to talk to him. Uh, if he wants to talk to you, then in your, you know, in your travels about the city, um, and by the way, the city has gotten a little safer. Uh, the Legion has managed to gain control of, uh, you know, kind of put down the riots a bit and, and get control of most of the major roads and thoroughfares. Uh, Forge Park is still a disaster, but uh, other than that. Um, and some of the country, uh, there was, you know, you might have mentioned, remember that um, uh, Farina made a comment about the gulag. Uh, yeah. There was a breakout at the gulag. Anyway, uh, so as you go from A to B about the city, and if, a, uh, if you see a person kind of go across your path, calling out as a seller of incense, mm-hmm. that that is a signal to you that uh, Dario wants to see you. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
and um, that happens. Excellent. And the typical thing would be that you would go to this professor's office mid at lunchtime mm -hmm. the next day. Though I will say, like. But you're also really, really, I'm really busy, busy right now. I don't yeah. think. I mean, like, I'm like, I, I like, I'm religious, but again, there's that whole true believer thing that mm. I don't. So I'm not that religious. <laughs> <laughs> so right now, <laughs> it, it is great when you put your beliefs in conflict with each other. Yes, by the way, that's yes, always that's that really is good. True. That I is mean, true. you you can do what you want to, but I <laughs> I would feel I feel obliged to kind of like um it might not happen maybe, like maybe the you same are, day i mean are you are you are you sure you're not real really i mean like <laughs> you know I mean, it's pretty common to have um com you know let's see uh inconsistent beliefs you know it's like true. like to uh it's like i don't believe in true believers when it comes to the sense of like okay and then they're going to like do awful stuff systematically about it or i'm kind of like a, i really believe that you should do stuff personally and like follow those like tenets. So I think like personally quite religious, yeah. but wouldn't yeah. institutionalize mm -hmm. my stuff. I think, that, I think that makes sense, right? Because yeah. you've no. seen what the Church of Set has yeah, done. Yeah, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, the, I mean, the fact that the Church of Set has outlawed the religion of Volos mm -hmm. is perhaps what has fed this uh, disdain for um, people who abuse their beliefs in such a way, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, no, I'm like I'll probably I will make time to go and do it, but I probably won't be like at the height of everybody freaking out. It'll probably be when things have settled. Because I mean, he went off for like five minutes and was like, "Where did he go?" So, <laughs> so I'm not very suspicious. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you you don't go the next day. That, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. I'll, I mean, you, I'll like, delay, like, but I will. He, go. He wanted to meet with you, but you know, he's not your him. he's not your boss. He's not, <laughs> it's, yeah. yeah. He, he, he knows who the kind of person I am. I so. think I think that's uh, I think that the great okay uh, yeah. that settles that question. Well, if you're comfortable wrapping up now, we'll go into our uh, beliefs and um, uh, situation here and uh, our ARTA awards for the session. Um, let's see here. And I have a, uh, yeah, where'd I put it? I have an ARTA awards. Hand out. Yeah, my cheat sheet. I made it for you, but I need it for myself too. <laughs> Here it is. Yes, I made it for you. <laughs> Arda and Bernie. Well, because I'm not playing standard, I've, I've changed the rules a bit for, for how Arda uh, works in the game. Okay, so let us um, uh, review. We'll always start with, by reviewing beliefs and whether you, not you got a chance to resolve or work on any of the beliefs. Um, uh, I, I, did. I think, uh, starting with you, Ray, I think that you uh, you worked on the belief about true zealots because you did bring up Farina in that conversation. Mm -hmm. That was certainly um, sort of doing a little bit of research, if you will, yep. on on people's feelings about her. So that's worth a fate. Okay. One um, you worked on Tihomir. Convincing, uh, convincing of TMR that someone else should be the the consul of the central bank. Uh, mm -hmm. You you haven't done that. You haven't resolved it because he hasn't gone on. But he gave you a path to do that. So you definitely got a fate for that. Mm -hmm. And um, preventing the economic uh, collapse, collapse of, the, of the industry. You definitely worked on that really hard. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going <laughs> to say hard. Uh, super hard. Yeah, <laughs> super hard. It was the focus. Of, I'm going to say this. You know it. Um, uh, that uh, one week, you know, is not enough. To, I mean, like, like there's yeah. more that has to happen. Oh, yeah. this, this thing's gonna. Uh, I assume uh, resolving that out. one might be even more checks than usual. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, also, maybe result in a new emperor before yeah. then too. <laughs> <laughs> Me oh. trying to like get my subquest done <laughs> means that like I'm electing a new emperor. <laughs> uh, yeah, and I uh, I think that. You know, Plant the seed. But if I forget later, no, nah, never mind. Um. <laughs> so I moved three things forward, so it's three fate, right? Three fate. Yeah. Great, yeah. right, because I yeah. burned three fate in this, yeah. this session. Yeah, that's yeah, that that that's good. Um, okay. Oh. Mm. 
She's yes, yeah, tall. which I like. <laughs> she is really tall. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes, Leanne, for, for anybody watching at home, uh, Leanne is the daughter of Cordova. Cordova had various children, uh, but Leanne was the only child that he recognized publicly. Not that he denied the other ones existed, but like like gave her a title mm -hmm. of, of a title in his family. So she's the only person that has a royal title, an imperial title. Um, uh, and Leanne's, uh, and Cordava, it was half Germanic and half Arab. Uh, and Leanne mm -hmm. was the daughter of Cordava and Tiniel, who, <laughs> who is, not Tiniel, no. <laughs> Tiniel. Uh, who is a genie, uh, who is also, of course, of Middle Eastern culture. So um, uh, Leanne is, uh, definitely has a very Middle Eastern look to her, and she's very tall, because genies in Chaldea are very, very tall. They're just like eight feet tall. Yeah, so, so she's, she's probably the tallest person in the room, if, if everybody's room is human. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Or dwarf or halfling or hobbit. Yeah, right. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, okay, so um, uh, let's see. So Leanne on the throne, you definitely worked on that a little bit. I mean, to the extent you could, you went and talked to Leanne. So you didn't, yeah, so that's good. You get a fate for that. Um, you get a fate for working on preventing the economic collapse of the empire. You can spend these fates. <laughs> uh, and, uh, but I don't think you talked, no. you worked on the, uh, uh, the exchange rate thing. No, I did not. Okay. Sounds like a fun group project. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so if you have an instinct, you also get a fate if you use an instinct or a trait to create a complication for yourself. Ooh. Um, or send the story in a different direction. Um, did not. I don't remember that happening. I, um, I wanted to, but I did not. Okay. <laughs> So the next thing is a persona. You get to award each other a persona, and mm -hmm. um, but um, explain why you're awarding it. Typical things could be great role playing, uh, great humor, in-game yeah. humor. Uh, I would like to reward a persona uh, for not only making a king turn into a puddle of a person for, <laughs> for a brief moment, uh, but for uh, at, like literally carrying the roles of that one. Like I immediately <laughs> failed my role, and you had to knock two out. So, so fantastic work. Yeah, that was great. I was going to say that I'm awarding uh, embodiment to you because, like, the whole like I was all like, "Oh, what's going on with Ollie?" And then his like meeting with Leanne. I was like, "Oh, that's <laughs> what's going." Okay, understood. And I felt like that was just like came across really well um, in your role play. So. I I agree. I thought that was good. I also get to award a persona, and I'm going to award it to uh, Donica for um, embodiment in the. Um, uh, just ha your ability to r ad lib on the spot, make up things like problems with the militia. Okay, sure, I'll let that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's so funny because there actually is a story in Perrin about problems That's with. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> it's like you guys seem like you have problem. If you're like braced on the French and the British, you got problems. <laughs> I, I think that was just very clever, very clever uh, role playing on your part. So. Uh, so you get a persona for that. Excellent. Let's see. This is episode uh, 509, isn't it? Yeah. Well, this is like the third time that I've played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's a. I mean, I don't want to get to the end of the story too fast, right? No, you got to really. drag it out, we're man. You know, I'm, I'm, we're all young. We're going to be doing this for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to keep up, Joe. You gotta keep up. Stay healthy. Uh, that uh, takes care. You know, there is, um, you know, we talked about fate and persona are um, the art that we've been dealing with. I want you to be aware that there's a third type of art called a deed, which is something that's granted very rarely uh, that is uh, sort of a larger than life sort of thing. Um, and I would say that saving the collapse, avoiding the collapse of the economy will probably qualify for that yeah. so you know stay yeah. working More on that. that goal yeah and I think what we'll do help uh, next time I think by the way 
next cluster, I'm put, I'm going to keep you two together. I think that's okay. If you're yeah. if you're okay with that, be because yeah. you have a common the economic team. Let's do Let's it. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> team taxi. Oh, yeah. I'm going to wear my money jacket next time. Right. We yeah. just like show up with like money. <laughs> money glasses. <laughs> money glasses. Yeah. You have a you have a common purpose, so I think it makes yeah. a, a lot of oh, sense yeah. to to put you together. And what we'll do, help me remember, next time we play, is that um, there'll be another. Thing has to do with the economy, but the economy saving the you know preventing the the economic collapse of the empire is like a big overarching goal. We can set intermediate goals mm -hmm. um, that as we go along, so that uh, you have the opportunity to earn persona along the way. Like that, my okay. heroic quest is save the economy. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> But like the entire economy. The whole economy. I have to save the whole economy. Like this stinks. <laughs> Literally my job, but. <laughs> um, I'm going to award both of you a, um, a, uh, <laughs> let me look at a character sheet. No. Let's see, I just need to look, I'm suddenly <laughs> like struggling over what terminology. <laughs> um, I'm going to award both of you a difficult steel test for the encounter with the um, the royalty from Perrin and Emil. Oh, awesome. Okay, so the way you do that is that you'll, um, you know, cross in a, cross out a, uh, the, the difficult, the middle. Difficult. Yeah, yeah. And, right here? More, I can't see what your hand, uh, yeah, the middle row here, difficult. Okay. Yeah, the first dot. Yep. Gotcha, yep. okay, awesome. And did you get, Circles tests. You did two circles tests. Oh, I did I do think. a circles test. Yeah. And there were. I think one of. I think were, one was ob. I think we were both ob, ob two. two. Yeah. And you rolled four dice. Mm -hmm. So. And I did beat it. Yeah. Yeah. And you got <laughs> four dice versus an ob two is routine test. So you got two routine tests on um, circles. All right. Nice. Okay. This was, a work, this, was a work, this was a working meeting. <laughs> we got a lot done. <laughs> <laughs> Danica, like, oh, yes, day at, <laughs> day at the job in the office. It's Question: what, what was the drink that Danica got after after that long, long uh, shift? If oh, I may ask. it was definite. Like there was there was wine that I was having, and then once I was like away from most of you guys, shots, shots. <laughs> <laughs> just vodka. <laughs> yeah, uh, aquavite. Yeah. Aquavite. She, well, she comes from the Russian place, so yeah. <laughs> she's uh, like, I got I vodka. Can. Yeah, vodka. it's like I, my steel isn't great except when it comes to drinking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, one last uh, time if you'd like to reintroduce yourselves and promote any, if you have any projects you'd like to promote, anything you'd like to plug, this is your opportunity to do so. Um, like again, I am Ray and I was playing Danica tonight. Uh, I don't have any personal projects, but y'all should come back and watch me on Graver's Dig every once in a while and my friends who are there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's an actor okay here. It's the show that's opposite this one, 6 p.m. Pacific time on Wednesday evenings. Yeah. Uh, my name is Marcus. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Best Kinda Worst. Um, you can also check me out this, I believe, this Friday on Sarah's Table, as well as Ooh. check out our wonderful show at 2 p.m. every single Friday, Table Takes, which I produce, starring Peter. We'll be there this week, but you can check them out. Check out the VODs on Twitter, or on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, yeah, I am uh, so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. All right, yes, uh, Gen Con TV, we have lots of shows. We have, uh, um, like... Uh, Marcus mentioned on Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific time we have table takes at 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific time we have Sarah's table which is like really awesome cool funny small press RPGs tend to be her jam mm -hmm. a lot lighter and funnier than we are uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're There's all a lot serious. less economic theory yeah a lot less economic uh, yeah, there was theory. a dragon egg last time <laughs> like a dragon egg baby yeah, see, that's so delightful. On uh, Mondays at 9 a.m. Pacific, I play Peter vs. Machine, so you like hang out with me and chat while I play. Uh, right now, I'm playing Sim Meier Civilization. I play strategy games, but it's really an excuse to play Civ, so that's what I do. Um, <laughs> Don't blame me. <laughs> Monday at 6 p.m. Pacific is Dressed to Quest, as an RPG uh, game that's very much into the costuming and uh, excellent stuff. Uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m. is Indie by Night. Uh, follow Vampires in Indianapolis. Hey, that's on, on brand for us. We yeah. love that. And Wednesday night, 4 p.m. Pacific is Path of the Brush. At 6 p.m. is Us. 
Thursdays, 10 a.m. is uh, Blood on the Clock Tower. If you think Werewolf is cool, like this is like Werewolf on steroids. Mm -hmm. It is amazing. Ooh. 4 p.m. is Roll with Rem Alternus. Uh, she is like uh, quite the influencer in the world of Shadowrun, and lots of Shadowrun type goodness happens there. Uh, our website, by the way, if you like the world of Chaldea and want to know more about it, uh, www.worldofchaldea.com is our website. And all sorts of Chaldea lore that can be found there. Probably some spoilers if you dig hard enough. And also, our socials, hashtag World of Chaldea. That's it. Thank you for watching. Appreciate you coming by and stopping in to uh, see what we're doing. And I will be back in two weeks to continue this campaign where I will have as my players, Lexi the First and Bonsai Baby. Ooh. And oh, It's a wild too, shoot. already character-wise. <laughs> character-wise, that's gonna be a wild episode. Oh my God, and oh, Megan Karami Nasser. So um, three characters that I think are not quite as united in purpose as these two. It's like, we're vibing. They're going to yeah. fight, fight, yeah, fight. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I mean, I don't know who I paired Lexi up with. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> there's, there's, I don't think anybody has the same purpose as her priestess of Sat. <laughs> yeah, fight, fight, fight. Uh, but, all, but all three of these players are amazing role players and a lot of fun. I can't wait to play with them. All right, thank you, everybody. Good night, and have a pleasant time. <laughs> <laughs>